Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Episode 6, The Green Building Marketplace for Building Green 2022. Building Green is the flagship campaign of the Philippine Green Building Council for the, the PhilGBC events and consists of year-round activities that encourage participation in the green building advocacy. I am Chester De La Cruz and I will be your facilitator for today's Building Green episode. Thank you to the PhilGBC Board of Trustees for initiating this event. Our Chairman, Mr. Edgar Sabidong, Vice President and Chief Sustainability Officer of Artaland Corporation. Our Vice Chair, Ms. Rowena Ramos, Principal of Ecotectonica Inc. Our Secretary of the Board of Trustees, Ms. Elizabeth Mendoza, Managing Director, Monocrete Construction Philippines. Our Treasurer, Mr. Raymond Rofino, CEO of Neo Property Management Inc. And the members of the board, Ms. Catherine Ilagan, the President and COO of PhilInvest Alabang Inc. Mr. Felino Palafox Jr., Principal Palafox Associates. Mr. Henry Liwanag, Junior Partner, GF and Partners Architects. Mr. Luis Chamon, Country Manager, San Goban, Philippines. Ms. Audrey Belpo, Managing Director, World Home, Corp World Home Depot Corporation. Mr. Francisco Aureliano, Consultant of Maynila Water Services. And Mr. Gabriel Maria Angelo Cascante. I would also like to acknowledge the CEO of the Field GBC, Mr. Christopher De La Cruz, the Executive Director, Ms. Anna Tungol, and the Field GBC National Secretariat for organizing this conference. We would like to thank our members and sustaining corporate sponsors that support the programs of the Field GBC and for making our activities possible. Our diamond sustaining sponsor, Neo Property Management, our gold sustaining sponsor, World, World, sorry, that's Wall Vision Corporation. And our silver sustaining sponsors, Arsaland Corporation, Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines, Ecotectonica, Firefly Electric and Lighting Corporation, GF and Partners Architects, Gigatech, KPI Elevators, Monocrete Construction Philippines, San Goban Philippines, SMCC Philippines, Surface Repair Solutions, and World Home Depot Corporation. We also would like to thank our Building Green 2022 strategic partners for their support in making this Building Green Conference 2022 possible. Our Diamond Sustaining Sponsor and National Secretary Sponsor, Neo Property Management. Our Gold Sustaining Sponsor, Wall Vision Corporation. Our gold strategic partners for Building Green 2022, we have a Boitis Infra Capital Economic Estates, City Homes Builder and Development Inc. Our silver strategic partners, First Balfour, Daikin Air Conditioning, and Wall Vision Corporation. Our Building Green 2022 bronze strategic partners, AGC Asia Pacific, Botanica Nature Residences, Phil Invest City, Datem Incorporated, FPD Asia Property Services, and Monocrete Construction Philippines. Before we continue, please be reminded of the following event guidelines. This seminar will be recorded by the PhilGBC National Secretariat for documentation purposes. We encourage active participation during the event. You may ask your questions using the question box in the GoToWebinar panel. Questions that you will raise will be addressed during the discussion period. Upon request, an electronic certificate of attendance will be issued by the PhilGBC National Secretariat to your registered email addresses, provided that you are present for more than 50% of the allotted time for each session, you, that you have completed the feedback survey, which will be sent to your registered email addresses after the event, and that you have requested a copy of the certificate through events at fieldgbc.org. This week, we are celebrating World Green Building Week 2022. We are on, we are one with around 70 national green building councils all around the world to celebrate our annual global campaign with this year's theme, Building for Everyone. 
Our holistic approach to build for everyone aligns our focuses on planet, communities, and the economy with the sustainable development goals. These shared challenges reveal the scale of what is possible when we come together. This World Green Building Week, our global network is coming together to accelerate sustainable built environments for everyone, everywhere. This episode, the Green Building Marketplace, will provide solutions promoting green procurement with updates on the Green Building Procurement Hub and presentations on latest trends, technologies, and market innovations in industry. We will first be presenting about the field GBC support for end users and providers of green building products, technologies, services, and spaces with green credentials through the Green Building Procurement Hub. This will be followed by the presentations from green materials, products, and technology manufacturers and suppliers, contractors and specialty trade contractors, as well as presentations on sustainability services. These episodes will include presentations from engineer Jomarie de, de Guzman, the consulting sales engineer from Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines. He's a graduate of mechanical engineering from San, uh, St. Louis University. He started working in the property management industry under JLL before bringing his skills to Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines as a consulting sales engineer and since then, he has been closely collaborating with HVAC designers and architects to ensure that the most applicable and efficient solutions are available in the market. Engineer De Guzman will be sharing on air conditioning design with indoor air quality. Next would be Mr. Ronald Liu, Marketing Manager First Balfour. Mr. Liu joined First Balfour in 2013. He's a graduate from De La Salle University with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering. Ron, as his colleagues call him, started his career as a management trainee of First Balfour. It is a four-year program for high potential graduates with a, who will be trained for leadership and management programs. Ron's early role was an HR associate supporting in the implementation of First Balfour's HR information system. He was also assigned to T1 Rentals, the company's plant and equipment division, as a system analyst. Ron's career progressed further when he was assigned to the department's strategic, strategic business planning, business development, and marketing. He's currently in charge of brand development, market data analytics, and digital marketing efforts, and one of the key members of the technical working group for sustainability of FIRST, Balfour. Mr. Liu will be sharing on First Balfour's sustainability initiatives. Next speaker will be Mr. Adri Aldris Miguel Chinquanco, the Vice President of Wall Vision Corporation. Wall Vision is a specialty contractor for aluminum and glass works, PVC, windows, and metal fabrication. Today, they'll be sharing on glass walls of comfort. Mr. Eric Seas, Project Sales Manager of Dyson Airblade Hand Dryers, in Coban Kiat Hardware Incorporated. Having graduated in architecture, Eric has spent more than a decade in the built environment with rich experience in high-end building materials and environmentally friendly products. Um, Eric will be sharing on recent studies on washroom behaviors, the importance of hand hygiene, and sustainability impact of the conventional hand dryer solutions. And then we have Ms. Catherine Lipana Gomez, who is an ESG partner at the Deals and Corporate Finance Practice of PricewaterhouseCoopers Philippines, where she led engagements involving ESG strategy, GHG reporting, pre-assurance review, and other M&A advisory services, such as financial due diligence, corporate finance, business recovery services, and feasibility study, among others. She will be joined later by Mr. Rajiv Ralhan, partner at PricewaterhouseCoopers India, and Mr. Gopal NP, manager of PricewaterhouseCoopers India. They will be presenting on PwC Sustainability Analytics Hub. Last but not the least, Mr. Harris Guevara, the President and Chief, Sustain Chief Executive Officer of Drink Sustainability Communications. 
the pioneering business, the pioneering business sustainability and creative communications consultancy in the Philippines. He's also a writer, poet, and the CEO of, of CEO of Uno Morato, an online shop for literary literary books, arts, crafts, and more. A fellow at the a fellow of the Westerwell Foundation Young Founders Program. He received a certificate course in business sustainability management for from the University of Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership and is currently taking his master's degree in sustainability entrepreneurship and design at Brunel University, London. Mr. Guevara will be sharing on communicating sustainability the drink way. So we will be opening the floor for questions after the presentations from our speakers. You may send your questions for our speakers using the question box and will be addressed during the open forum. Ms. Rowena Ramos, our Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, will be delivering this episode's closing remarks. So to begin, I'll be sharing with you on the Philippine Green Building Council's initiative to support the promotion of green procurement, the Green Building Procurement Hub. The Philippine Green Building Council leads the action in greening our built environment in the Philippines. Our objective is to ensure that we are that we have a sustainable environment where everyone can live, work and play. For the last decade, there has been an increase in the availability of green products and services. However, the uptake of these green solutions are not yet business as usual. We launched during the last Building Green Conference, the Green Building Procurement Hub. Uh, the, the Green Building PH program is an, out, an online hub for green building products and services and green building spaces for lease. The Field GBC created this online hub with the aim of connecting project proponents with like-minded partners in industry to support the life cycle of green buildings whether it be during design, construction, or operations. This is our connecting project owners, our way of connecting project owners, developers, and users to the suppliers and manufacturers of green building products, and to the professionals and service providers of green building services. Over the past few years, one of the major comments or challenges that we have been receiving is where the users can find the appropriate products and services to successfully deliver their green, their Berde Green Building projects. We have been seeing increasing numbers of Berde Green Building projects in our communities and cities, and we have also been receiving increasing interest from project proponents on their need to procure and implement strategies, technologies, and services that will help them in achieving their green building targets. We have also been seeing the increase in the availability of materials and services offering better sustainability performance. In line with our commitment to facilitate the exchange of best practices and technologies in the market, the Philippine Green Building Council created the Green Building Procurement Hub or Green Building PH. The Green Building PH is a service provided to the industry on the available product, services, and technologies that may be used when pursuing your green building projects, especially your bare day green building developments. We establish the Green Building PH as your one-stop shop for green building products, services, and green spaces for lease. The hub was developed for project proponents as a decision-making tool in identifying the most appropriate product and services for your bare day green building projects. Professionals and designers may use the hub when searching for the products and materials to achieve your sustainability target when designing, constructing, and operating your green building project. And users and the public may also use the hub to be informed on the best available certified uh, bare the green building projects when leasing or buying their green building space. The products listed in the database range from the structural materials to architectural finishes. You may search through the database to find out about what are the features and performance of the green building products available in the market. We have updated the list of products based on the submission of our members. If you have products with green credentials, 
do not hesitate to contact us to have them listed. The products listed in the hub are green materials that would help you build and manage your green building projects. The product listing include concrete, masonry, wood, plastics and composites, thermal and moisture protection, finishes, specialties, conveying equipment, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, electrical and process interconnection, among others. The hub also highlights the benefits of these products. During registration of the products, the product suppliers are required to submit the green credentials of their submitted products for listing. So in the hub, you will also find information on how the product or how does the product contribute to green buildings, information of what the product certifications and labels have the product received, and also information on the related requirements and credits under BERDE that when you use the product may potentially contribute towards achieving. You may also search through the list of services in the hub and find out about the expertise available in the green building industry for the design, construction, and operation of your Berde Green Building project. Here, you will also find green building professionals that may help you in your green building projects. If you think your services is essential to green buildings, please contact us to have them listed in our green building procurement hub. In the services page, green building professionals and service providers are listed depending on the life cycle stage their services are applicable. These stages may be pre-design, design construction, or operations stage. Through the green building procurement hub, suppliers and manufacturers of green products and technologies, as well as service providers and green building professionals will be able to market their products and services through the hub. It will lessen their administrative cost for Berde Projects proponents, request for copies of certification and credentials of their products and services if they are listed. They can simply say that the product or service is listed in the Green Building PH Registry. Under the services page, you will also find information on how, how can the service assist in green buildings and what green building projects has the provider completed. So if you're planning also to lease a space in a green building, the buildings listed in the database range from residential to commercial buildings. You may search through the hub and find out about the features and performance of Berde green, building, green buildings available, available for lease in the market. You may access the hub through any browser or device through the site greenbuildingph.org. You can navigate through the Green Building PH using the navigation panel at the left side of the hub. A search box is located above the navigation panel that allows you to swiftly search through the whole database using keywords for the products, service, or building space you need for your project. You can also search for the brand names, product names, product manufacturers or service providers, or simple keywords related to your needs. Are you interested in the, uh, in the listed products, services, or spaces in Green Building PH? The hub also features companies and their contact information per listing to help you in inquiring about the product, services, and spaces for the procurement needs. How can you be part of the hub? The field GBC members are provided 10, 10 complimentary listing as part of their member benefits. For field GBC members, you may have your products, services, and green building spaces listed on the green building PH by submitting the accomplished form for each product, services, and spaces you want to be listed and the supporting documents reflecting your green credentials of products, services, or the green buildings. For products, supporting documents may include eco-labeling certificates, material data sheets, or product specifications. For services, quality assessment certificates, training certificates, professional licenses, or even sample completed projects may be submitted. 
while the copy of the green building certificate may be submitted for the case of green building spaces. Submit the accomplished form and the supporting documents to the program secretariat through email at greenbuildingph at fieldgbc.org. Please take note that all submissions will be received and reviewed by the Green Building PH Program Secretariat. A corporate member is provided with one submission of 10 free entries for, pub for publication per year. You may avail of additional plan packages if you want to list more than 10 entries. For non-members, we are also providing five complementary listing as part of the introductory benefits of the hub. Your green product services and green spaces for lease will be published with minimum details. For non-members who, who wants to have their products listed and green spaces for lease published on the online hub in full details, you may, you may avail of our publishing plan packages. You may download the same form and submit your accomplished forms and requirements to be included in the online hub. The supporting documentation must reflect the green credentials of your products and services or green building spaces. You must also pay the listing fee for your application, confirm the fees, and submit the requirements to the program secretariat through email at greenbuildingph at fieldgbc.org. Please take note that all submissions will be received and reviewed by the program secretariat. So the Green Building PH offers complimentary free listing with minimum details as introductory benefit to the public. However, if you want to have product services and green building spaces be published and connect with like-minded individuals, like-minded partners in industry, you may want to avail of the uh, Green Building PH publishing plan packages. Regular plan offers 20 entry listing for field GBC members and non-members. This plan package offers 15 entry listing. Premium plan package offers 30 entry listing for field GBC members. For non-members, this plan package offers 25 entry listing. And if you have a requirement for more than 30 entry listing, then the elite plan package best suit your need. The number of entries may be used for products and services. For instance, a field GBC member company availed of the regular plan package they may list 12 products and eight services or services entries listed. How will it be published online? The Green Building PH will have four quarter release publishing. You may avail of publication plan packages depending on your listing requirements. For both the field GBC members and non members, publication plan packages can be renewed annually. If you are submitting your listings, Entries must be sent per batch of entries depending on their availed plan package. Entries must be encoded using the available downloadable forms on the online hub and must be submitted and complete support or must be submitted with complete support documents. Submission is scheduled every first month of each quarter. Submission of additional entries is not allowed once published. Entries cannot be replaced or removed unless the submitted entry has been discontinued. Online publication of entries is scheduled by the end of every quarter. Recent updates to the Green Building Procurement Hub will be published this October 1, 2022. The deadline of submission of entries to be included in the next quarter update is October 31, 2022. Whether you are a user looking for product or service to help you complete your Green Building project, or a supplier or manufacturer that would like to connect with our colleagues in the industry, we welcome you to participate in the program and be part of the Green Building Procurement Hub. For more information, please visit greenbuildingph.org or you may contact the Program Secretariat at greenbuildingph at philgbc.org. So for our next presentation, um, we will have Mr. Jo Marie de Guzman from Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines. I will now pass on the controls to you, Engineer de Guzman. Uh, hello, Sir Chester, and hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, first of all, I want, I want to thank you for this opportunity that uh, we were able to present here in this event. And um, okay, um, 
Once again, I'm Engineer Joe Marie V. De Guzman, an air conditioning uh, from Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines and a consulting sales engineer. As uh, Sir Chester has mentioned earlier, I had my experience with the property management industry for uh, more than four years. And during my tenure with property management, um, we became, maybe I can say, as the mediator as we course through different concerns from our value developers from architects, and also our uh, end users, okay? So way back in property management, we were focused in providing comfort to the building occupants in the best way possible. It became our goal to make sure that the equipment provided in the building are all functioning and the building occupants are satisfied, safe, and secured. Then we can say that we have provided the best service. Now, I am currently on the other side of the coin with a totally new perspective. Yes, still, we work closely with developers, architects, and even consultants, and even our end users on, the air on their air conditioning needs. And luckily, here in Daikin, we share the same goals. We look at the air we breathe with a deeper approach. And here, we came to realize the current understanding of air conditioning. It is simply not just about the cooling the room. Typically, buildings in general are always designed with air conditioning equipment with the mindset that if these equipment are operating properly, the building can provide the bare minimum for occupants to work or operate effectively inside. But is that really the case? Are air conditioning units already enough? This is a typical design of BPO office. Um, yeah. Normally, we see floor-mounted FCUs, which are uh, seen in the screen. And as the time and innovation progresses, we have learned to adapt to new designs. In the unit selected in this project reference is the ceiling cassette FCU. These FCUs are distributed strategically to avoid hot zones for every particular space, depending on the application. But still, most people think that that's the only main factor to consider to, do, to distribute the cool air evenly. But temperature and air distribution is not the only factor we have to consider to provide comfort cooling. Imagine a 20-year-old employee or maybe a student entering a building with poor indoor air quality in which he experiences sinus, congestion, sneezing and cough, nausea, dizziness, headache, eye, skin, nose and throat irritation, shortness of breath, asthma and other respiratory problems, fatigue, depression, and memory loss. Imagine for a 25 years old to be able to experience such things. These are the common symptoms of a seat building syndrome and uh, such symptoms can even make us old or yet make us feel old. And we don't experience such things, right? I think most of us here, if there's one wish that we uh, want, I think I will po natin tumanda, ano? And that's why it's important to consider good indoor air quality. Indoor air quality is not just about temperature and filtration. So what exactly is IAQ or indoor air quality? Well, indoor air quality deals with the determination and management of the air quality within and around buildings in relation to health, wellness, and comfort of building occupants. That's according to Indoor Air Quality Philippines. But how can we achieve good indoor air quality? So we have four points here that uh, we can consider. First is the ventilation. It is, the air, it is to refresh the stale indoor air with fresh outdoor air. Next is through air processing, through processing outdoor air to bring it near the temperature of indoor air and distribute the air throughout the room. The third is humidity control, in which indoor humidity is appropriately controlled by humidification and or dehumidification. And lastly, through air purification, in which we try to remove airborne allergens such as dust, dander, pollen, and mold, as well as viruses and bacteria. Now that we are somehow aware that there is such thing as sick building syndrome, 
Going back to our previous layout, here is our new building layout. Yes, the air conditioning units are still present, which are highlighted in blue. All right, um, but do you see any anything different from the previous plans? Here, highlighted in green, we have placed fresh air units. This distributes fresh air into the breathing zone area where there are occupants and each dampers are placed strategically to have a proper circulation of both the conditioned air and the introduced fresh air. Good thing that in this project, during the design stage, IEQ equipment was already introduced. The concept of indoor air quality was already applied. And also research tells us that improvement of the design using introduction of fresh air will lead to the dilution of CO2 level and other harmful particulate matter inside the built environment. And for the case of BPO, it increases the productivity of employees. There are many methods to improve the indoor air quality and it depends usually on the application of the building. More economical, more efficient, and our employees will surely be more productive and even young looking. Okay. Here is another project that uses a different type of approach. <clears throat> Unlike in the previous project, that IEQ equipment was already in considered during the design stage, this project right here underwent necessary adjustments during the construction phase just to make way to IEAQ. Highlighted in blue is the usual location of SPUs, in this case, most of which are ceiling ducted type. Well, how about the fresh air? As a comparison with the previous project that has flexibility on the design to install those suction grills in the outside wall made of concrete, this project right here has a glass facade. And this example is located on the 35th level. Highlighted in yellow is an air well with a supplementary booster fan coming from the roof deck. And the suction side of our ventilation equipment is located in that air well area. The equipment used in this design has the capability to introduce fresh air. And there are things that I wanted to highlight in this design. Firstly, the branches encircled in red. All right. Um, first is the branches circle in circle in red are bypass branches from the fresh air duct going to the SPUs instead of just recirculated air to be con to be conditioned. The fresh air is also introduced in the SPUs. Secondly, highlighted in purple on the um, left side of our screen is what we call the SDC or the steamer duct chamber. It is an equipment or accessory installed in the ducting of HCU equipment with streamer technology that serves as a purification system with MERV-14 filter. In the case of the application of SDC or the streamer duct chamber, um, air purification is no longer needed in that particular loom. So my additional layer of filtration na po tayo because of the usage of the streamer duct chamber. And yes, as I've mentioned, there are two projects that we discussed. Firstly, is the um, pro existing project, uh, sorry, firstly is the project that undergo design in which we were able to introduce IEQ. And the second project in which the construction phase already started, civil works are already done, but the developers started to um, incorporate the IEQ equipment. Yes, IEQ may cost a little bit more due to the additional equipment and installation costs. But there, these are the things that really need to be considered in our buildings to achieve healthy, safe, and secure environment. Such equipment are um, specially designed to achieve healthy and good indoor air quality, including wall-mounted type units and ceiling cassettes, split type units equipped with streamer technology for additional level of protection and air purification. So that is my presentation for this morning. I hope uh, we were able to um, share some of the solutions that we can incorporate in order to achieve indoor air quality 
not just in the design stage, but even on our ex existing um, projects. Po. Once again, uh, I'm Engineer Jomari B. Guzman from Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you very much, Engineer Jomari de Guzman. So if you have questions for Engineer de Guzman, please have it in our chat box at the GoToWebinar panel. We'll be discussing this later on during the panel discussion. Our next presentation will be from Mr. Ronald Liu, Marketing Manager of, the Fir of First Balfour. So I'll now pass on the audio and controls to you, Mr. Ronald Liu. Thank you, Chester. Yes, okay, good morning, um, everyone, and to our 141 attendees. On behalf of First Balfour Management, we'd like to thank Philippine Greendale Council for giving us this opportunity to share our capabilities and green initiatives. I'm Ron Liu of First Balfour's Marketing Department, and our talk this morning follows this outline. Our mission, Walking the Talk, where we will give you a virtual tour of First Balfour's head office, the first BERDA certified facility in the Philippines, and our strategic priorities. As First Balfour, our primary business is in engineering and construction. Our parent company is First Philippine Holdings, and we have been in the business for more than 50 years. We achieved the highest contractor accreditation with ECAD in 2016. Being quadruple A means that we have satisfied certain set of requirements, including having a net worth of at least 1 billion pesos. It's also a proof of first Balfour's ability to undertake big ticket projects through the combination of our project management skills, engineering capabilities, and financial strength. We adhere to quality environment safety and occupational health standards and we are one of the first triple iso certified construction companies in the philippines recently we have also achieved the gold accreditation from investors in people making us the first and only iip gold accredited engineering and construction company in the philippines our groundwork is our people nurtured and inspired by a compassionate culture. One of the programs we have under the IIT is the Management Trainee Program, where I am a graduate of. Lastly, our head office in Sukat is the first to be awarded with Berde Design Recognition Certificate under Berde for New Construction. First, Balfour's mission stemmed out from our chairman, Federico R. Lopez, principal, that doing the environment less harm is no longer good enough. Our mission, which is to forge collaborative pathways for the decarbonized and regenerative future, does not only encompass construction requirements, but also to build structures that are green and resilient, most especially in this climate change world. And we are glad to be sharing these ideas to like-minded organizations such as Philippine Green Building Council and our esteemed guests in this conference. First, Balfour aligns with this mission through our chosen path. This will allow us to influence and lead the transition towards decarbonization and regeneration in the industries we choose to invest in. On our way to play, we ask ourselves, how are we going to face the market? For First Balfour, we want to be the leading influencer in the industry when it comes to sustainability. In terms of operations and the choice of projects that we get ourselves into. In terms of capability systems, we ask ourselves, what give us competitive advantage? And for First Balfour, we have enumerated five capabilities. Lastly, apart from being an engineering and construction company, we also intend to grow our allied businesses, including heavy equipment rental and transport and concrete and aggregates. We currently focus on four key markets, transport, water infrastructure, power and energy, and high value buildings. This is backed by our strong core construction capabilities in earthworks, underground utilities, foundations, civil structural, 
and electromechanical rigs. We have been walking the talk. In fact, our current office stands on reused land. On the 21st of June 2011, we got ourselves a new office address in Sukat, Paranaque. Then a one hectare tree building property, the office finally integrated our head office operations and plant and equipment yard. In 2016, we installed a 100 kilowatt peak solar rooftop in our head office. 400 photovoltaic module system has enabled an average of 86% monthly savings in electricity since being energized six years ago. We are currently targeting to add another 100 kilowatt capacity, which will surely result to additional savings in energy consumption. So here are some of other initiatives that enabled us to become the first BERDA certified facility in the Philippines. In our effort towards building a net zero facility, we devise systems that save water through the installation of dual flush water closets and a rainwater harvesting system. Water costs are saved as rainwater is used for irrigation and for flushing water closets and urinals. This system will also be expanded. In terms of energy consumption, energy efficient light fixtures and fittings were also installed in the facility. And in 2018, we installed window films, which may seem invisible, but actually has 57% solar heat blocking capacity. Indoor heat as well as aircon usage are expected to drop further. Our carpets were also made out of 25% recyclable materials. Although the compound maintains a wide open space deck with native trees, endemic birds could hardly be observed in the area when employees first moved in in July of 2011. Sightings of local avifauna were still quite rare, then even with a number of large trees on site. In December 2016, to attract common bird species, nesting baskets and tray feeders were replaced atop these trees. And in recent years, bird sightings within the facility have become more and more frequent. And that's an indicator of our continued effort towards maintaining a green building. Our priorities. Aside from the usual metrics we use to measure our growth, we are also working towards integrating decarbonization and regeneration into our businesses. We also aim to be the leading equipment rental and transport business in the Philippines, as well as reinforcing our concrete and aggregates division. Integrating decarbonization and regeneration into our businesses. First step is that we have done since we adopted the new mission is to cascade it across the organization. In cascading, we made sure that all the leaders are aware and supportive of our new mission. Every month, we conduct Digital Leaders Conference, or DLC, where we highlight topics and discuss relevant issues in the organization. This DLC is attended by the leaders of our company, and then these leaders cascade the discussions down to their teams. So we have continuously infused the DLC with relevant topics related to regeneration and decarbonization. So way back February, we invited SVP and CSO of GLOBE, as well as Siona, to discuss their sustainability initiatives. And just last month, we encouraged our leaders to support our partnership with the Plastic Flamingo. Admittedly, our collection of ESG data, especially in carbon footprint and energy usage, has been ad hoc ever since. It is done at the end of the year by the Technical Working Group, or TWG. So now we want to make it more systematic. Now that we have established a more systematic way of measuring and monitoring our ESG data, we'll then be ready to establish baseline data for 2022. With these baselines, we can now sit down and begin deliberating on what will be our specific commitments are regarding reducing our carbon footprint, 
improving efficiency of resources use, producing less or eliminating waste, and improve our social impact in the communities we operate in. With this system in place, with all our projects monitoring their ESG data, then we can now introduce the sustainability recognition for projects, which is similar to best in ESH and best in quality management awards. So over the years, given these awards and recognitions have been very effective in instilling quality and ash culture in our operations. And we want to replicate that in the context of our new mission as we get on this new journey. So there they are. These steps will allow us to integrate carbonization and regeneration into our businesses. But this is not to say that we have not done anything yet. First, Balfour has been engaged in various initiatives that are environment friendly and have reducing effect on our carbon footprint. We are using renewable energy in our projects where economically feasible, like what we did in Novaliches Balara Aqueduct 4 project for its tunneling operations. We are also in the search of partnering with like-minded organizations as we journey towards our mission. We are a proud member of Philippine Green Building Council since 2011. We're also proud to be part of Energy Development Corporation's Net Zero Carbon Alliance, or NZCA. As one of their partners, we are privileged to be help in achieving their Net Zero carbon target by 2030. Early this June, we signed a move with Plastic Flamingo. Our head office in Sukat is now a collecting point of plastic waste, and these can be converted into reusable materials. Our president and chief operating officer, Mr. Anthony Fernandez, was also invited to join the Council for Inclusive Capitalism. It is composed of CEOs from organizations of various sizes that do business in ways that lead to a more inclusive and sustainable economy. So here's some photos of our engagement with Plastic Flamingo. Collected plastic waste are then converted with Plastic Flamingo into reusable materials such as eco lumbers and eco boards. We started small in 2013, but since then we have planted over 15,000 seedlings across the country. Most of the trees planted are in the communities where we have operations in, and in this initiative, well, it's made possible thanks to our 2,000 employee volunteers. Aside from tree planting activities, we have also conducted coastal cleanups and the Brigada Escuela. Moving on to our like businesses, we started T1 Rentals, our rental business in 2013, and now our goal is to be the top three in the local rental industry. While we increase our geographic exposure, we acknowledge that our operators are one of the important aspects in the business. We continue to develop them and bought training simulators, which helps us in assessing and categorizing the skills of our operators. We also continue to collaborate with our partners to explore their green initiatives. And lastly, exploring different types of ventures such as in people transport. We bought our first two electric buses this year. Serving a client base composed of almost 400 different companies nationwide, Tio Rentals ensures that steps are taken to reduce the environmental impact of its vehicle fleet. These steps include the use of GPS and telematics to track, monitor, and analyze equipment performance and fuel consumption in the field and to optimize delivery routes. We also continue to make fleet efficiency gains in our equipment rental operations. It invested in greener equipment through the acquisition of Euro 5 trucks, exceeding the local emission standard, which only requires the use of Euro 4 in the Philippines. Data also shows that Euro 5 
produces 22% less carbon emissions and 50% less particulate matter emissions than Euro 3. Some action photos of our operators with the equipment simulator. Creos is a technology that provides various simulation modules and exercises that allow operators to master heavy equipment operations in a virtual environment. On the other hand, the heavy goods vehicle simulator has a dynamic motion seat that enables operators to learn the specific controls of straight drops and articulated drops with trailers. This unit serves as the newest addition to T1 Rentals' current line of, of latest training and development of technologies in the handling of heavy construction equipment. Our EV buses called Comet are currently deployed as employee shuttle service vehicles of our client First Philip, located inside the first Philippine Industrial Park. So we look to service other companies with our EV buses. To complete and aggregate, we are transitioning to mobile matching plans to address the needs of our projects across the country, support and align with the decarbonization and regeneration mission. We are now checking with green suppliers and are scanning the market for potential new external engagement in the future. Other than concrete, of course, we would need aggregates. Our aggregates division supply them to our ready mix concrete division and other third party suppliers. Lastly, for PCAS, we would like to implement PCAS use for our upcoming key projects and other opportunities. To forge a better and safer environment for the future generation is the path that first Balfour chose to take, and we acknowledge the possible disruptions that goes along the journey, as well as the challenges brought about the pandemic. We sincerely thank Philippine Green Building Council for allowing us to be a part of this prestigious event and share our active involvement by being a responsible builder. This first Balfour's mission to forge collaborative pathways for a decarbonized and regenerative future. And we trust that by doing this together, we can make a difference and influence change. So thank you and make sure to follow our social media pages and our website to get the latest updates on our people and our businesses. Back to you, Chester. Thank you very much, Ron, for sharing first Balfour sustainability journey. You know, I find it really interesting to know that uh, first Balfour is also supporting companies and uh, for the net zero global goal. You know, last year the Phil GBC launched the Advancing Net Zero Philippines program. Currently, we have uh, eleven certified. Uh, projects under the Advancing Net Zero program. I'm taking this opportunity to invite also first Balfour. Maybe we can have you as one of the champions for the Advancing Net Zero Philippines program. Sir, let's discuss this soon. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Chester, <laughs> for the invitation. Yeah. So our next presentation will be from Mr. Aldris Miguel Chin Cuanco, the Vice President of Wall Vision Corporation. So he'll be sharing you his presentation. Hello everyone. First, I'd like to thank the Philippine Green Building Council for this speaking opportunity. I'd like to acknowledge also my other co-speakers and everyone in attendance today. My name is Aldris Chinguanco from Wall Vision Corporation and I am the Vice President of the company. As you can see in the screen, my topic for today is glass walls of comfort. And before I dive further, I'd just like to give a quick background about Wall Vision. Wall Vision is a glass and aluminum specialty contractor, mainly dealing with the building's facade. Uh, we have been in the industry for 20 years now, and we are here to continue our service to the market. For our products and services, this includes design and engineering to actual implementation and installation of glass and aluminum systems for residential and commercial buildings. We also cater nationwide, having our main office and plant here in Manila and three more plants located at Cebu and Davao. As our time in the facade industry passes by, 
so as the technical advancements that continue to alleviate the products and services that we offer. To which, I am proud to say that the Green Building Council has taken a step further and to use this technology for a greener development here in our country. To serve as an example, here are some of our projects with Berde certifications. We have Cebu Exchange with Berde Design Certified 5 Stars, Latitude Corporate Center with Berde Design and Construction Certified 5 Stars, and currently ongoing construction with Lucima that is also Berde on track. So to dive deeper on my topic, how can these glass walls provide comfort for our tenants? Simply put, these glass walls reduce more heat coming from the outside going in compared to other glass and aluminum systems. Through this heat reduction, we will be able to picture a nice and cozy room coming from the blistering heat outside. So the picture you can see on the screen is an actual glass wall taken from the inside of Cebu Exchange. Speaking of heat reduction of these glass walls, we actually have a metric to determine this, and it is called the U-value. The material glass in conjunction with its aluminum and other components will collectively have a U-value basing from the thermal analysis our company can provide. As we are guided by the Green Building Council, we make it a point to meet the necessary specifications in order to achieve the heat reduction required by the building. To break it down further, there are two main components that we must take into consideration. First is the glass. The glass has to be performing for it to be on par with the specifications required. As you can see on the screen, here is a sample performance data of a performing glass. Then, we also have the aluminum and its other components, the design of which also contributes to the reduction of heat. With the glass, aluminum, and its other components combined, then can our engineers simulate a thermal analysis to come up with its collective U value. Aside from the physical comfort we experience through the heat reduction of these glass walls, there is also another aspect of comfort we should take into consideration. A comfort that we can look and pass on to the next generation our contributions for a more sustainable environment. In correlation, there is less heat that goes into the room, meaning less consumption of your air conditioner, resulting to less chemicals absorbed by the air and less natural resources used by the electric company. With our simple contribution of these glass walls, we are hoping to lessen the carbon footprint that will be generated in the future. We are only but a component in the construction of a building. However, through the supply of these glass walls, we are hoping to make a ripple effect that could influence the outcome of a more sustainable environment. Now that is a comfort presently felt for the future generations to use. Thank you everyone, and once again, my name is Aldris Chinquango from Wall Vision. Have a nice day. From Mr. Eric C, Project Sales Manager of Coban Kiat Hardware, representing Dyson Electronics. Good morning. Uh, thank you for, uh, for the opportunity given to us. Uh, so I'm uh, Eric. I'm from uh, Comangkiat Hardware. Uh, we are uh, the Philippine distributor of uh, Dyson Airblade hand dryers. So hopefully after my presentation, uh, the attendees will uh, have a better understanding and uh, will appreciate uh, the benefits uh, of using uh, the Dyson uh, hand dryers. So my presentation is uh, separated into two parts. The first part is uh, focused on the washroom hygiene uh, and the study that uh, Dyson has done. And then second part is more on uh, delving more into sustainability. Okay. So as uh, we've all experienced the, the pandemic, uh, Dyson has done a uh, global survey uh, they did it in 2020 and another in uh, last, just last year, 2021. Uh, and also they're now uh, just consolidating uh, the figures for 2022. So if given the chance, we'll uh, also try to share those uh, data with uh, you guys if uh, once done. 
So of the 20 markets that uh, they did the survey on, uh, uh, it's uh, the demographics is uh, 15,100 uh, respondents. So it's a mix of uh, uh, general survey questions. So it's more on uh, gauging the usage and attitudes of uh, of uh, the general uh, population since uh, we've experienced this pandemic. So one general uh, uh, data that uh, that was established is people has uh, have been uh, uh, washing their hands more often. So I'm sure uh, all of us uh, have experienced this. So. The figure shows that uh, wash, people are washing hands five times more per day. And another key figure that uh, has been, uh, that was found during this uh, survey is uh, the respondents are less likely to leave the washroom without washing their hands. Uh, it has a slight drop of uh, 49 percent compared to 66 percent uh, at the height of the pandemic in uh, 2020. And as far as uh, washing hands with soap and water uh, five times a day, it also uh, had a slight drop from 84 to uh, 74 percent. So the survey shows that uh, the people are now more uh, relaxed. Uh, there's a slight uh, dip in um, in the consciousness uh, in terms of uh, hygiene. So as far as uh, hygiene consideration, it's also again a uh, uh, slight dip. Uh, from uh, forty percent, no, it's not actually slight. It's uh, from forty percent uh, in 2020. Uh, it went down to twenty nine percent. So uh, people are more uh, less. Uh, they less uh, the the practices that, that they do uh, in terms of hygiene. Uh, they're doing it less. So in terms of uh, the questions that relates to. The, the washrooms, the the public washrooms. So, the question is, uh, what are people most likely to do if they find a washroom that's uh, that has no uh, hand dryers or no supply of paper towels? So, uh, common people, uh, the biggest uh, response is 23%. Uh, so, people just let their hands dry naturally. Uh, Sixteen percent uh, wipe them on their pants or their shirts. Twenty-two uh, percent uh, use uh, paper towels, pocket paper towels, or and then fifty percent get paper towel from uh, get toilet paper uh, to dry them. But uh, this uh, re uh, this uh, relates to more chances of uh, bacteria uh, breeding in our hands uh, because a study shows that uh, damp hands has uh, can transfer up to 1000 times more bacteria than dry hands so washing hands is uh, important but drying hands is equally important that's uh, one key takeaway that uh, we would like to stress upon So as far as uh, people's uh, concerns uh, when visiting the washrooms, 61% uh, of course uh, says that uh, their uh, headaches uh, are because of the toilets being unclean. 43% uh, says that uh, paper towels are always, uh, are always lacking or 37% is the black toilets. 26% uh, on over, overflowing uh, trash bins, uh, and 21% on empty uh, towel, towel dispensers.
38% uh, doesn't want to touch the the physical buttons uh, because some hand dryers have uh, uh, have physical buttons to operate. 38% uh, are afraid that the hand dryers are not uh, often cleaned enough. And 32% uh, are uh, afraid of uh, using hand dryer because of unclean air. So to address uh, all this, uh, concerns we at Dyson uh, are confident with our product that uh, we can uh, safely serve uh, and mitigate those concerns uh, first is uh, for the touchless uh, function uh, all our hand dryers are, are sensor based so no need to physically touch the items to operate it uh, and the uh, Dyson uh, hand dryers has a hygienic surface which kills bacteria and viruses. And of course, uh, the biggest uh, advantage of using hand, uh, Dyson is uh, we have uh, HEPA filters which can filter out the uh, common bacteria. Uh, and these uh, HEPA filters are also included in the, uh, in the warranty that Dyson gives, which is uh, five years. So added the uh, another set of questions also that uh, came up uh, during the survey is uh, people are more aware uh, once people are aware that uh, the hand dryer is Dyson, 59% of them feel more comfortable using it, uh, and 46% uh, said that they are more likely to wash their hands more often. Okay, so just to show, uh, to give a short uh, summary of uh, the advantages of using uh, the Dyson hand dryers, of course, uh, Dyson has a, has a has a digital motor. Uh, it's uh, the strongest digital motor in the market. Uh, that's why uh, we can give uh, enough power, uh, enough power to dry uh, the hands of the users. Okay, second is a HEPA filter. So all Dyson uh, hair hand dryers has a HEPA filter, which uh, again uh, blocks uh, the gen the basic or common bacteria, and uh, they're all touch free. Uh, no need to touch sur physical surfaces when using the when operating the hand dryer. And uh, varying uh, models uh, can dry hands between 12 to 14 seconds. So that's also a common uh, apprehension for people uh, that uh, use hand dryers because sometimes they use the hand dryer and yet uh, it doesn't dry the hands. So, so again, uh, this basically just uh, says that uh, washing hands, after washing hands, drying hands is equally important. And then to address the issue of uh, people, uh, uh, if they are afraid that uh, we're use, using uh, hand dryers in the public washrooms uh, have uh, unclean air, uh, again, uh, Dyson has HEPA filters, uh, which uh, can block 99% of uh, particles, including bacteria and viruses. All Dyson hand dryers undergo rigorous testing uh, and uh, are certified uh, in standards of NSF, University of Bradford, uh, Compton, BRJ, and the University of Florida. So compared to uh, the conventional hand dryers, which uh, doesn't uh, do their purpose. Uh, hand, Dyson hand dryers uh, can dry your hands between 10 to 14 seconds, depending on the uh, model. Uh, 
So we are certified by NSF uh, International and also uh, certified by HACCP International, uh, which is a certification for uh, food manufacturers. So I, uh, this uh, is uh, the second part of uh, my presentation, which now tackles more on the sustainability. So in relation to uh, paper towels, uh, 75% of the respondents uh, says that they're concerned with uh, environmental issues. Uh, precisely because single-use paper towel uh, cannot be recycled. That's the main, uh, uh, that's the main uh, issue with this uh, using the paper towels. Uh, since they're already uh, uh, from recycled material, they cannot be recycled uh, after using. So they just use, uh, eventually end up filling our landfills. Of course, paper towels uh, are consumed uh, and uh, they are also uh, quite expensive. It uh, takes up, of course, a significant uh, costs uh, on operations. And sometimes uh, when there's uh, no cleaners, uh, some most of the paper towel bins uh, are left empty. So just to add on to our advocacy, uh, this is just a uh, from a uh, point of view of uh, the paper towel uh, impact on the environment. So of course it starts from cutting down trees uh, to deforestation and of course uh, it needs a lot of water to, to clean through the, throughout the paper towel production. And uh, next, uh, a lot of chemicals uh, are used to manufacture this. And then next, uh, for delivery and restocking, of course, uh, this, this adds on to carbon footprint, uh, which leads to waste management. And at the end of the life cycle of uh, the paper towel, it just fills up landfills. So this uh, slide shows uh, how, how Dyson is uh, the advantage in terms of uh, carbon, uh, carbon emissions per day in, uh, compared to other conventional uh, hand dryer and paper towels. <clears throat> By the way, single, uh, Dyson products are also certified in uh, uh, Singapore Green Building Council uh, with uh, under the category of uh, three excellent uh, under the excellent category. So as far as the specific group, hand dryers uh, can be Under this, uh, the certification, it, it provides a comfortable in, in the environment. Products must satisfy material toxicity level and quality for certification. So the Dyson uh, uh, products pass this uh, category. Just to sum up my presentation, only Dyson hand dryers have the benefits of the most hygienic, hygienic hand dryer uh, in the market. So we have uh, only 10 to 14 seconds dry time. Uh, it costs less to run, uh, but of course it's better for the environment and it comes with five years warranty. Uh, thank you, that, uh, that ends my presentation. Thank you, Eric. So again, if you have questions, um, 
please have them at the question box and we will discuss this later on during the panel discussion. So for our, we'll continue with the next presentations. Uh, the next presentation will be from Price Waterhouse Coopers. We have Ms. Catherine Lipana Gomez. Um, she'll be joined in by Rajiv Ralhan and Mr. Gopal Norani Parasu. I'm, pa I'm passing the audio to PWC for your presentation. Ms. Kate? Yeah, thank you so much, Chester. And um, good morning, everyone. And thank you once again to the building, Green Building Council for having us participate in this yearly and worthy event to come together and find ways on how we can build more sustainable infrastructures, that is, those that thrive with the environment, promote people's well-being, and contribute to economic progress. So allow me to introduce to you our firm, um, Isla Lipana and Company, or PwC Philippines, is an advisory firm that has been operating in the country for 100 years now. In fact, we just celebrated our 100th year anniversary last June, 22nd, 2022. We offer three main lines of services, the assurance or our audit practice, tax and advisory, divided into deals and corporate finance and consulting. And we have offices in the three main islands of the country, particularly uh, in Manila, Cebu, Iloilo, and Davao. Currently working remotely from home, we service our clients who are located from all over the country and even globally. As we dedicate ourselves to our overall purpose of building trust and helping our clients solve important problems, we commit to support them through their most pressing concerns, including environmental, social, and governance risks, or ESG as we know it. From establishing an ESG strategy and framework, assistance in formulating GHG emissions and sustainability reports, as well as assurance of these reports, to decarbonization or net zero plans and other ESG-related services, we help our clients navigate the complex and varying demands of their stakeholders, including investors, lenders, customers, regulators, and employees in the vast areas of ESG. Today, we will be presenting a tool that is very helpful for construction companies and builders such as yourselves in order to develop projects that are environmentally friendly, wellness-oriented, energy efficient, and truly sustainable. And for that, may I give the floor to Rajiv Rahat, our partner from PwC India. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, so good morning, all. Uh, I'm Rajiv Ralan, partner with uh, PwC India. Uh, I'm having more than 22 years of experience in this whole decarbonization space. And as a PwC, uh, we've been engaged uh, supporting many segments that how can they achieve or maybe move forward towards net zero ambition. Built environment sector is one of the critical components for overall ambition of achieving uh, net zero ambition. So, as a PwC India, with our network forms, for example, here with PwC Philippines, and in many other countries, uh, we've been engaged working with clients on developing policies, which is building codes, green building certifications, net zero roadmaps, energy assessments, and all that. And at the same time, we are helping other clients to implement uh, these policy actions. Uh, so today, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, supported by my colleague Gopal Narani, who is a manager. Uh, we are working together. So while working with many clients, we uh, identified that uh, the decision makers, uh, they are looking for solutions. They are looking for guidance that what is the best way to achieve uh, decarbonization or net zero ambition, and they are looking for uh, key data points to make right decisions that 
uh, what kind of materials, what kind of technologies, uh, what is the cost benefit analysis, uh, what is the roadmap or timeline should do it. So what we did, we developed one uh, solution, we call it as a sustainability analytic hub. It's a service come solution where maybe we are helping our clients uh, just to uh, assess performance of uh, uh, their infrastructures, whether existing or new, and then suggest options that how can they move forward towards achieving this overall net zero ambition. So, so briefly, I'll talk about this solution. Next slide, please. So, what are the challenges here? Uh, we all know that maybe we we may talk about net zero and other terminologies but the business case is that uh, i'm paying money because of my energy use and utility bills so that's a challenge for me as a building owner uh, with covid uh, our, our maybe uh, few of the panelists talked about air quality so indoor air quality again is coming out as one of the key concern areas so how do I run sustainable operations? Health and well-being. So there's a lot of focus around health and well-being occupants and resource efficiency and operational profitability. So these are the critical issues which uh, uh, clients as well as consumers are looking for that maybe how do we address it? And if we look at from the organization perspective, uh, the organizations, they have their priority areas around corporate social responsibility, ESG is getting a lot of traction. Uh, they have their, because we've been interacting with many of the uh, big players, uh, many in uh, Philippines as well, where uh, clients are asking us that how, how can we help them uh, to achieve their net zero commitments. Some, maybe one client may ask for uh, materials, net zero materials. Some may ask for net zero operations. Uh, then uh, how do we address the triple bottom line, which is, kind of a people profitability. So how do we move forward on that? And then uh, there are sustainability development goals um, where maybe uh, big clients are committed towards achieving uh, their ambitions. Next, please. So what we did, looking at all these issues, uh, we created this platform, we call it as a sustainability analytic hub. It's an integrated platform to evaluate all important aspects of sustainability. So it uses a digital model, uh, both for existing as well as new facilities. Uh, it actually captures that how can we improve the design or atrophic decision making uh, through data driven algorithms. And it's a real-time benchmarking in terms of resource efficiency, livability, design, performance, economics. So what was the conventional approach? Uh, maybe building energy use was catered separately. Uh, the HVAC part was catered separately. The RE integration, renewable energy integration, or daylight simulations and all that. But this is, this is much beyond that. So what we have done is that we have integrated everything. And then uh, maybe we have added features. We are looking. We are looking at advanced and distinctive analytics. Uh, we are looking at comprehensive and futuristic decision making. And 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 there's a wide scope. Uh, maybe for its integration into different sectors. Next, please. So where this solution fits into? So it it fits very well into both existing. Uh, as well as uh, new facilities. Uh, for new facilities, uh, it has uh, integration at a pre-design stage or schematic design stage. And for a retrofit, of course, uh, maybe this can be adopted at any point. Uh, but if you see this, uh, maybe uh, if we adopt it for the new construction, uh, it very well helps uh, the building owners to take right decision at the right time. Uh, so that they can move forward with their design process. Next, please. Now, what are we trying to convey here through this uh, solution? So what we did, we did looked at 
many of the uh, global solutions or tools available and then we we compared this sustainability analytic hub in terms of design performance resource efficiency so if you see this maybe many of the uh, tools solutions which are available they are providing partial services but if we look at a sustainability analytic hub uh, for example in design performance maybe it can assess land use balance building form building orientation solar shading urban heat islands anything so from a simple building to a complete community this can do all the assessments and similarly if you see resource efficiency energy water actuate manual anything embodied energy is getting a lot of traction nowadays uh, so the, this this solution has the capability maybe to do a uh, multiple kind of analysis next please and similarly if you see the livability it is getting a lot of traction the people are asking about uh, future climate analysis climate resilience workspace enhancement daylight analysis uh, pedestrian comfort thermal comfort indoor air quality so looking at this when we looked at this is one stop solution which is which is providing all uh, uh, services on analysis in at one platform only next please I talked about advanced analysis. Maybe this is these are some of the analysis: the climate resilience through climate augmentation, indoor air movement tracking, uh, daylight simulation. Next, please. So, so what I, what we'll do is, uh, my colleague Gopal will run you through uh, what are the snapshots of uh, key highlights of this uh, sustainability analytic hub. Huh? And then maybe we can open the floor later for any questions. Gopal, please. Thank you, Rajiv. Uh, next slide, please. Right. So this is how. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So this is how the dashboard looks like uh, of the solution, which is called the Sustainability Analytics Hub. On the left, you have uh, project details, uh, which includes uh, the uh, location, the site area, the built up area, all the basic details. Uh, in the center is where the actual uh, model is. Uh, so this is uh, a model which uh, is existing and uh, surrounding the model uh, is the context. Uh, in the bottom, what you see is uh, the comparison of uh, what is the energy performance index, in terms of the baseline local energy code it could be any code and uh, and how far we are from reaching nearly zero or net zero on the right again uh, it's a very interesting graph uh, which the owners or facility managers uh, would really like to see uh, what is the energy use breakdown like uh, which comes to uh, with respect to hvac lighting appliances and in the bottom, what you see is another interesting graph, uh, you know, especially in hot countries like uh, Southeast Asia, what is what is the cooling load breakdown like? So what you can see is, you know, how much heat is dissipating from wall, from roof, from glass, uh, you know, and all those things. Next, please. Right, so this is the main control window, uh, you can say. And uh, on the left, you have various parameters starting from envelope, smart features, HVAC parameters, and solar PV parameters. So if you can see, there is a drop down against each of these uh, aspects. For example, under window size, you have many options to choose from, uh, similarly for roof, similarly for HVAC, and all the other uh, aspects that have been mentioned. Uh, and what the what the uh, display in the center does is as soon as you change any of these parameters with the click of a button, you immediately see what are the changes or what are the impacts of those changes. You know, of course, uh, you know, this being a static image uh, that won't be visible, but uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, the center piece of the screen is something which is really important and dynamic. Uh, so usually what happens, uh, as Rajiv explained, uh, you know, consultants take time to go back and, 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 you know, make changes and come back to the clients. But here, 
what you see uh, is instant uh, uh, visualization of the impacts of each and every feature that you see on the left hand side of your screen. So as I said, uh, if there is any uh, you know, impact on the cooling load, uh, you can see that. What is the uh, impact of the iteration? For example, baseline versus the iteration, you can see that. And in the bottom, you can see uh, you know, what is the baseline GHG emissions with respect to the iteration. So this is a very interesting dashboard. And on the right, you can see uh, important parameters like energy use, cooling load, uh, you know, energy offset through PV, uh, GHG emissions, as I explained. Uh, we also have in the bottom right of the screen uh, scenarios which you can create. Uh, and we also have an optimum scenario and a best case scenario, which includes all the possible measures that could be included in a built environment. Next, please. Yeah. So Rajiv mentioned about uh, livability, which is often ignored, uh, you know, and this being the COVID time, uh, it is really important to understand what effect uh, does it have. Uh, and one of the aspects, uh, apart from the ventilation part, is the thermal comfort part, wherein if you can see most of the spaces within the building are, are towards the uh, higher side, that is around 28 degrees. And on the right, you also see the daylight potential or the glare potential rather, which is rather high in, in the current case. In the bottom left, uh, there is also uh, an aspect to views, which you can see is, uh, you know, uh, is, is very good right now since the window area is more than 50% as we saw in the earlier screen. Next slide, please. And of course, this is something that, uh, as I mentioned, the window size in this screen is now reduced 30%, and so are the other parameters. Uh, you know, the, the, the insulation has, has increased, it is better now. The smart features have been included, which includes occupancy sensors, daylight sensors, uh, HVAC parameters, the cooling set point has been increased uh, from 24 to 26. And you see the impact of the energy savings. Uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this, this shows the real time impact of the saving of the, inter of the in inter interventions that have been incorporated. And you can see that, uh, you know, the energy savings, as I mentioned, is reduced to 65. The cooling load is reduced by 39% and the pathway to net zero emissions, uh, you know, the emission saving is 65%, uh, emissions offset by PV is 23 and the rest 12% is uh, something that we need to look at via, you know, other mechanisms. So all in all, it's, as I said, it's a very interactive dashboard, uh, you know, and real time uh, analysis is possible uh, in this solution. Next slide, please. And the impact of this is, is something that we looked at uh, the earlier one. Here, what we are seeing is thermal comfort has drastically increased. Uh, glare potential, again, it has reduced. Uh, and the views have slightly been reduced, of course, because the window area has been reduced from 50 to 30%. So, you know, uh, we don't need to create separate models for simulation. It, it's all integrated, and that's one of the uh, key USPs of the solution. Next slide, please. Of course, we talked about resource efficiency, livability, but this is something uh, which is the most important, or, or I would say equally important. Uh, you know, what are the impacts in terms of economics? So what we have here is the investment, what is the savings, what is the payback, and of course, uh, what are the operational cost savings, uh, and what is the operational uh, cost which is likely to incur? And uh, on the right, what you see again, as I said, uh, what is the investment, uh, which is likely to increase, uh, you know, and there is, uh, if you see, as, as, as you can, as you can see, there's 65 percent reduction in the energy cost. So it's a very, uh, uh, you know, useful uh, graph for owners uh, or, or decision makers to see uh, what's the change in the uh, energy savings versus what is the investment, what is the payback. So all these things are all integrated and, and that is something really useful to have uh, under one dashboard. Next slide, please. Uh, 
Of course, Rajiv, you mentioned about some of the advanced uh, uh, analysis that are possible uh, uh, in this in this uh, solution. Uh, we we can see what are the heat and the humidity maps. Uh, we can see the sun path diagram and and see the impact of shadows. Uh, you know to see. Uh, whether shading is required or not, we also have uh, the capacity for wind uh, wind rose diagram, which is often found in uh, in, in in isolation in, in various software. So this is capable of uh, doing, uh, which is which, which falls under the climate study and orientation. Next slide, please. Right. Uh, we also talked about, uh, you know, the, the the CFD analysis, which is very much possible in this solution. Uh, you know, as I indicated, uh, COVID times, it's important to understand whether there are stagnant pockets uh, in any of your spaces. That is where, again, this solution comes in very handy. Next slide, please. And of course, uh, we also uh, can can see uh, if you see on the left hand side, uh, there is a CFD analysis for natural ventilation potential, uh, and uh, we also can see the impact of dynamic shading. Uh, you know whether it's static or dynamic, and uh, as you can see in the bottom, uh, we are we can also we are also. Uh, this solution rather is also capable of doing the dynamic facade analysis, which is really uh, something uh, which is unique uh, uh, proposition to the tool. Next slide, please. Yeah, last few slides before I finish. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is uh, another USP. Uh, what it does is you can create multiple scenarios. Uh, and uh, what it does is it, it shows a comparative uh, say, uh, analysis of the emissions, uh, whether it's scope one, scope two, uh, and it showcases uh, what is the breakdown, uh, you know, so that's something really interesting. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, again, uh, with respect to uh, all the aspects that we discussed, whether it's thermal comfort, visual comfort, views to outdoors, uh, potential for ventilation. So uh, it really gives you a comparative analysis, uh, you know, in a snapshot. Next slide. Yeah, and this is again an extension of that. Uh, what is the window size that we have kept for each case? What is the roofing material? What is the energy savings? What is the energy performance index? Uh, what is the HVAC system? Cooling set point, you know, and, and most importantly, it gives you what is the energy use breakdown uh, in terms of HVAC lighting appliances, a pathway to net zero. So, you know, it's it's a comprehensive tool uh, and, and that is something very useful as I discussed. Next slide, the last slide. Right. So, uh, you know, where do where does SAH uh, fit in? You know, uh, what we see is it fits in the overall project life cycle, whether it's uh, realizing overall, uh, you know, company goals, whether it's GHG emissions reduction, uh, ESG net zero strategy for new and existing built infrastructure, or whether it's just focusing on a single, uh, you know, build, uh, building, uh, form massing orientation, uh, occupant thermal comfort, visual comfort, envelope, uh, you know, and, and of course, green building certification is also integrated into the solution. Uh, facility management and operations, really important for existing built infrastructure. As you mentioned, it fits very well into uh, you know, the existing part as well, whether it's retrofits, uh, you know, whether it's integration of smart building technologies to assess the net zero readiness, smart buildings, integration, uh, you know, indoor quality and air quality. And of course, the last but not the least, in terms of investors, uh, you know, it also, uh, you know, helps uh, setting ambitions for sustainable investments, uh, national and international benchmarking of sustainability performance, and ultimately helps in increasing the visibility and asset rental value. So with that, uh, we conclude our presentation. Uh, thank you very much uh, for giving us the opportunity. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Kate, Rajiv, and Gopal. So we've had uh, products and innovative technologies. Uh, we had a presentation from First Balfour on uh, best practice. Um, now we have analytics, and then now we'll go to communicating sustainability. Okay. So the next presentation will be from uh, Drink Sustainability Communications. Mr. Harris Guevara will be represented by Katrina Poe and Ram Nepomuceno. Yes, good morning. Uh, am I heard loud and clear here? Uh, yes, Gabe. Yes, lovely. Thanks so much, Sir Chester. Um, uh, good morning, everyone uh, from, as you can see, sunny. Uh, United Kingdom. Uh, surprise, I am not Harris Guevara. Uh, this morning, uh, very grateful for the organizers for being agile with us and resilient in, in a way that we've all become used to because of the pandemic with technical difficulties such that I shall be presenting uh, this morning. Although I know um, uh, the wonderful team at the at PhilGBC will be uh, putting together Harris's video uh, for the actual for the one that will be broadcasted uh, or posted online. So you folks uh, are on the ground floor of a very exclusive version of this episode of this presentation. And uh, I'm here with my colleagues from our sustainability department uh, of Drink Sustainability Communications to be able to field uh, your uh, questions about uh, really taking a step back on why we have all gathered here in the first place of uh, uh, very plainly of uh, providing sustainable development for the Philippines, right? And I'll please allow me then to go over very quickly why we have to do so, why we uh, need to engage with these wonderful other esteemed uh, panelists here for this episode. Uh, to supply the solutions from the construction planning and construction phase all the way to the monitoring phase and why we need to continue to engage with our stakeholders, with our customers, with our users, uh, with our employees, and of course investors, um, uh, through communication, through effective communication materials and, and engagement uh, to continuously uh, contribute to sustainable development for our country, for the Philippines uh, uh, over time, which uh, as we have felt over the pandemic is really long overdue. So here uh, with uh, my colleagues at Drink Sustainability Communications, a communication and sustainability strategy consulting firm based in Manila, Philippines, uh, I invite everyone to take a step back um, and see these reasons why we need to keep connecting in the way that the Building Green Conference has brought us together for. Uh, on this next slide is a summary of that. Uh, according to the 2021 State of the Global Climate Report by the World Meteor Meteorological Organization, so that's WMO, uh, in 2021, uh, what we experienced was already one degree centigrade warmer than pre-industrial temperatures. Uh, that is, uh, 2021 being the sixth warmest year on record since human civilization has started uh, recording global temperatures. So since the 1800s, 2021 has been the sixth warmest year on record ever. That is uh, part of the 10 hottest years uh, in uh, the history of our society. 10 hottest years happened in the last 20 years, so within all of our lifetimes. So we have all felt the effects and have been affected by these effects of global warming of the climate crisis, particularly here in the Philippines and the global south at large. Uh, we've all experienced Yolanda and Andoy devastatingly and some of the strongest typhoons ever in the country uh, besides those uh, all within the last 20 years. There's higher sea levels now and storm surges and countless lives and properties destroyed. Uh, this is the reason why we need to, as a society, uh, 
start intentionally building green. On the next slide is a snapshot of the global risks identified by the World Economic Forum um, starting from 2021. Um, you'll see here as an overview between red and green, that is societal risks and environmental risks. All the more reason why we have to uh, come together and be very strategic as well as engaging uh, our fellow men, uh, all our stakeholders, uh, everyone across our value chain, in order to address the environmental pressure that we uh, have all been burdened with. Please just uh, uh, join me in imagining really the catastrophe that could happen if we don't temper the rise of, this, of, of global temperatures right? uh, with everything that we do uh, in, with, this, with our industry and construction in particular. The problem of our climate, it's the greatest problem of our lifetime and should be addressed quickly and strategically. We have to achieve sustainable development in the fastest way possible. And the fastest way possible to do that is all together, connecting with each other. About sustainable development, right? Uh, today, the most recognized and widely accepted definition of the term is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Very resonant in uh, building and construction. Uh, this definition, by the way, is by the United Nations, right? This means that as we continue to grow, uh, because we take care of our resources, we also have a need to grow and make sure that there's enough resources for the future generations. The growth of the future generations is rested upon us and what we build today. Our esteemed panelists here uh, in previous presentations talked about the bottom, the triple bottom line. On the next slide, it's a bit more of uh, a visualization of that. Sustainable development, triple bottom line. These concepts teach us that we can't survive as individuals and as organizations uh, by ourselves. And we need to, we need, the only way that we're able to survive is also is looking at these three equally important aspects the economic the environmental and social uh, impact of our organizations on our businesses so yes to be a sustainable company means that you have to have an excellent financial performance obviously uh, because that fuels growth making sure that uh, the company mitigates environmental impacts and actually contributes to environmental protection and, and taking care of the needs of the people and community who will continue to take care of the environment and financial performance uh, by extension in the long term. We can all appreciate, I believe, especially because of the pandemic, that all of these aspects are interconnected with each other and with all of us. And to, just to correct the misconception, sustainability we found in our uh, 12 plus years of working in this field, it's more than just tree planting. It's more than just that environmental protection, however, as important as that is. Sustainable development, sustainability for the Philippines also means economic equality, gender equality, the pursuit of human rights, anti-corruption, and other social issues. And these are all uh, going to be accomplished uh, only through us working all together and connecting with each other. There are four major players in sustainable development at large, and we're all part of these. Um, obviously the government and financial institutions um, and luckily for us, big corporations and businesses um, have already started to strategically operationalize sustainability uh, thanks to the solutions that uh, our fellow panelists, including ourselves, provide to them. General public is uh, the major player here that 
uh, we would like to particularly emphasize uh, part uh, for our uh, participants and attendees, uh, it's uh, not just a matter of being able to comply with regulations um, or uh, standards in order to uh, in, in order to access financial resources and, and, and the like for building green, but also the fact that customers these days don't just want corporate social responsibility, but corporate social accountability. There is data uh, from Salesforce uh, just this year, uh, including uh, the global data, including the Philippines, that 88% of customers and users expect companies to clearly state their values, which includes, of course, us as service providers. 88% of customers expect this, but only 50% of customers say that they do. In other words, this is a great competitive advantage for companies, for businesses to be and to, to be sustainable and to be transparent and communicate effectively about their sustainability. In fact, um, along with the latest data from the World Economic Forum, 80% of customers have already made sustainable lifestyle changes. I'm sure everyone here has had little uh, habit changes, particularly because of the pandemic. And further, 66% of customers have stopped uh, buying from a company whose values didn't align with theirs. So it's all the more reason for us to communicate what our values are in the first place, no matter what industry we're in. Now, how are Philippine businesses and companies doing in terms of communicating this sustainability and operationalizing this sustainability? This is data that I will be uh, briefly showing uh, based on a collaboration between the Management Association of the Philippines CEO survey in 2021, as well as PWC Philippines, actually, uh, one of our other panelists here. They had found from surveying over 100 CEOs in the Philippines, among those who participated, only 36% have rec had recognized their company's efforts in measuring and reporting financial impact of their sustainability practices. So uh, it's very clear that there is a great impact of the sustainability practices on their finances. 36% is not even close to a majority. Uh, let's take this time to reflect and ask ourselves, how has your company contributed to measuring your impact uh, of your sustainability practices? Because certainly you have uh, sustainable impact, sustainable practices. And how has that benefited you in terms such that the reporting it and showing it, have you started doing so? Companies are also starting to adapt business practices that are more sustainable, though. Thinking of our value chain, reassessing methods of the business model. And I'm sure the business leaders here have already started to think about how you can further improve business models and adapt different sustainability strategies across your value chain uh, through programs and policies. On the next slide is a, a summary of what others. Uh, CEOs uh, have concluded based on their own uh, based on their own practice in the last year. 69% uh, recognize that they have ESG initiatives. 43% have included climate change and environmental damage and strategic risk management activities. It's a good first step. But now more than ever, it's important. It's an important time to think what else you can do in terms of uh, sustainability, business sustainability, and communicating that. In order to unlock many important, uh, crucial benefits, particularly in this day and age, and time, uh, now that we have survived, now that we are, we must survive a pandemic. There are many benefits of business sustainability in communicating that. I briefly mentioned competitive advantage, improving brand image, of course, and uh, all throughout the other presentations this morning. We have gotten to appreciate how adopting more and more sustainable practices reduces waste, increases productivity, and reduces costs, as well as, of course, complying with regulations. 
and uh, from our expertise as the as uh, saying uh, as uh, having our niche in business sustainability and creative communications, we can attest to how much uh, business sustainability and being transparent and communicating that connects us with the best possible employees and investors, attracting them and satisfying our stakeholders, our customers, our users, uh, and the like. Besides uh, all these benefits coming together, that can be visualized in a business sustainability journey for everyone. On the next slide is our little visualization about that. I've mentioned that there is already so many companies uh, who are actively practicing sustainability in their operations. However, uh, it must be said that not many of them uh, are yet uh, very strategic. Many companies already have CSR programs, uh, but we find uh, and we feel, especially with a pandemic, that these uh, tend to be short-term tactics only. It is in everyone's best interest to take that opportunity to move to integrating sustainability to operations to reach these uh, strategic accomplishments and outcomes. Starting from compliance, right? Companies can take a step towards aligning sustainability commitments to business strategy till the, until they become the ones to lead and inspire other companies in their industries towards practicing sustainability. Driving profit, innovation, and real nation building in doing so. Now, uh, let's take a moment to think about where your company lands on the sustainability journey map. While we reflect on that, uh, we'd be able then to introduce Drink. This is where we come in. Wherever you are on your journey, that's where we meet you. Drink started off as a design and marketing agency in 2010. We trans transitioned and transformed into a company that specializes in sustainability communications, thanks to our trailblazing clients, a meeting their need of uh, connecting our backgrounds in social sciences, environmental science, in a creative and effective communications for that behavioral change to really unlock that long-term benefits of uh, uh, benefits in achieving sustainable development. We've grown alongside this global movement of sustainability uh, from the develop from the establishment of this United Nations Sustainability Development Goals and up to uh, being part of the uh, focus group for the SCC, the Philippine Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, eventually uh, giving guidelines and now uh, in the next year, mandating public listed companies and soon other, uh, other companies, other forms of companies and businesses to report their non-financial, that is to say sustainability uh, disclosures uh, year on year. We've grown alongside this global movement and now become the premier sustainability consulting firm in the country. A uh, little bit of highlights on the next slide in terms of what that looks like in numbers. Over 130 annual and sustainability reports following global standards, such as the integrated reporting framework, as well as uh, the global reporting initiative and, and uh, TCFD and SASB account uh, fin uh, sustainable finance accounting standards as well that most global investors are uh, already requiring uh, before they can even consider investing more into any company. Uh, we help uh, our clients with that, uh, not just through reports, but also through over 130 materials and programs for sustainability and development communications. And this is a gallery of some of just a few of our clients. Uh, as you can see, a mix of public listed corporations as well as the largest conglomerates here in the Philippines, including uh, non-government organizations, uh, government agencies as well, and as well as uh, nonprofits from all across uh, the globe now. 
uh, with operations here and abroad. We see sustainability as the language of 21st century business. So all of these uh, sorts of organizations, uh, we're excited to be able to hopefully uh, partner and connect with you as well, uh, the attendees and participants of this of this webinar, uh, on how we can provide our solutions to you. Next slide is all about our solutions, where we meet you where you are on your sustainability journey. Uh, this is also in chronological order in terms of how we can uh, truly cement sustainable practices and the benefits of those into the business, uh, into our clients' operations. Firstly, we have to build a foundation for that sustainable business. That includes benchmarking and the not uh, through analytics uh, that PwC provides and being able to translate that into a framework or revisioning uh, that can be easily understood and engaged uh, by the employees internally as well as external stakeholders. Through that uh, foundation, we're able to set measurable sustainability targets through materiality assessment and as well as uh, qualitative uh, means of uh, means of gathering data and analysis for this through stakeholder engagement activities. And bringing all those together into a roadmap timeline, that is to say, right, and targets uh, for our clients. Uh, eventually, then through that, we'll be able to embed sustainability across the value chain itself, not just through the strategies and programs, but also other activities that involve stakeholder relationship, particularly commun community and employee engagement programs. Last but not least, is uh, where our creatives really shine and come through for us is through communicating that sustainability effectively in order to in order to continue that sustainable development for the long term right uh, we have branding and communication planning services as well as capacity building workshops and webinars that we can uh, uh, customize according to the client's needs of course uh, the very first step for anyone to be able to communicate sustainability effectively is to report on what is already present in the business. And this is the full service that we can provide to you, uh, starting from onboarding everyone internally, as well as assessing uh, the material issues or topics. Uh, so it's really uh, based on what the business, what the corporation, the organization experiences in that moment, and that what is what will set the stage and uh, for them to continue on their journey based on where they are. This is, the, uh, this is as I mentioned before, the service that uh, is predicated upon following the highest global standards of reporting, such that it's uh, not just effective and creative, uh, through their storytelling and the visual impact uh, with uh, with stakeholders such as employees and uh, business leaders here, as well as customers, uh, but also investors, and opening up for more opportunities to continue to build green right, through uh, the other solutions provided in this uh, episode. Besides reporting, of course, then we'd be able to translate that into other materials. Uh, thanks to our uh, integration uh, of our sustainability department and our creatives, or uh, including editorial and design departments. Here are some of the uh, samples of the work that we've done uh, just uh, this past reporting season. Uh, so we uh, can proudly say that we have 100% uh, client retention rate, and we can appreciate here all the different uh, kinds of organizations that we help communicate their sustainability to great effect. Last but not least, just to quickly touch on um, another uh, great foundational step on how to communicate sustainability and activate uh, sustainable development um, in 
uh, your operations, particularly for this industry, is carbon management. We uh, are able uh, through uh, our services and uh, bringing together our sustainability department and our creatives in managing and and managing and tracking GHD data as well in order to find the solutions that best fit our clients on how to offset that carbon or eventually become a net uh, carbon zero organization and operation. On the next slide, I think we have a little visualization of uh, the different scopes of that and the methodology of uh, assessing and looking at um, any operations um, carbon emissions. So there's scope one, two, and three. And uh, we're able to provide uh, not just uh, tracking this data and managing it, but also communicate uh, communicating and capacity building internally with employees and all across the Philippines such that everyone will have an understanding and contribute to minimizing carbon emissions in order to reap the benefits of uh, managing our carbon responsibly. Such that uh, eventually you hopefully will be able to be, you'll hopefully be interested uh, besides uh, managing your carbon through uh, looking into managing your carbon through our services, but also to join our alliance, Net Zero Carbon Alliance, uh, that uh, first well for actually is uh, one of our other founding members. So um, I invite everyone to uh, look up netzerocarbonalliance.ph for more information about how we as an alliance will be, we will be able to help you operationalize and start that journey on net zero carbon. Besides that, uh, please feel free to visit our website. If you want to know more about our services on sustainability strategy, reporting and communications, as well as the carbon management services, uh, please do contact us there so we can further discuss how we can effectively partner uh, together, connect with each other, start contributing to start contributing to the country's sustainable development together as well. Thanks so much. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. And that is Gabe Onkiko of Drink Sustainability Communications. So may I invite our speakers and panelists to turn on their cameras and join us for the open forum for this episode. Uh, for Drink Sustainability Communications, we will be joined in by their sustainability associates, um, Ram and Katrina Po. So to our conference attendees, as mentioned earlier, you may send in your questions for our speakers using the questions box. Right. So Let's start with the first question. I guess this one would go for our um, suppliers of products and technologies. So for uh, green building projects that are undergoing green building certification, especially the, the Verde projects, um, documentations on green credentials is very important. Um, so can you share on available uh, or, or what are available green credentials? Uh, that you have for your um, products or technologies. Let's start, I guess, with um, Daikin air conditioning. Mr. Uh, Engineer John? Yes, sir. Uh, good morning to each and everyone, Paul. Good morning. Sir, uh, sir, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Sir, can, can you share on green credentials for uh, the technologies that you have? Uh, like if you, if you have ready certifications that can be utilized for projects undergoing green building certification, especially the Berde projects. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, as of now, uh, one of our certifications for our products is our CSPF uh, rating certificate in which um, all of our 
um, inverter type, split type air conditioning units complied with the uh, minimum requirements of the DOE and in which all of our uh, equipment garnered five star rating po for our CSPF um, rating, sir. Thank you. Uh, I guess for Dyson also. So aside from the one that you mentioned about the, the green buildings, uh, green product certification Singapore, um, other um, credentials, documentations that, like materials, uh, data sheets, are, are, are these readily available for clients, sir? I'm sure we can provide them and we can uh, ask uh, from Dyson Singapore yung mga certificates that uh, for us to share. But other than that, it's mostly intangible yung like uh, yung makakatipid sa paper towels. It's more on those uh, operational based uh, uh, advantages. All right. Thank you. Others who would like to share? Or you can just volunteer. <laughs> hey, um, yeah. So, follow, I guess follow-up question for uh, Dyson. So, in your presentation, you mentioned about the use of uh, paper towels for every few, especially in the Philippine market. Most, I guess, are still more inclined into using paper towels instead of the hand dryers so how do you uh, promote or how do you uh, change the mindset what initiatives have dyson done to shift uh, the perspective it's more of another it's more of uh, sharing lang the data uh, we have a, a spreadsheet it's basically uh, a simple computation lang we add it we factor in the uh, electricity cost and then of course the physical uh, the actual cost of uh, the paper towels and then we share it with the companies if they share uh, the details for us example makani yung uh, consumption nila in a month uh, we can give it uh, in a tabulation format to them para tangible yung uh, benefit uh, na makikita nila Yeah, for but for the end user, sir, uh, do you have campaigns that are doing to to have that shift from using paper towels to uh, the hand dryers it's, or the air dryers? Uh, it's more of it's more of yung mga ano nga, uh, the campaign are uh, spearheaded by uh, the Dyson uh, principle itself. So through social social media, alam ko parang LinkedIn and uh, uh, meron silang mga campaign na, na nilalabas. Right, it's more sir. on sustainability, yes. Yes, sir. Also, Ms. Annalisa Asis Castro is asking for the copy of the Dyson studies that you presented earlier. Can uh, do you have uh, these for sharing also? Ah, uh, pwede ba niya? Can I get her contact details na lang and then I can just message her? All right, sir. We'll 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 share the the email contact of uh. Miss Annalisa Castro. Okay. For Daikin and Dyson, uh, we have a question from Mr. Rafael Dulagan. Um, are there comparative case uh, studies for energy use versus conventional or competitive products? And what are the energy ratings of your product? Uh, Engineer Jean? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, so actually, uh, yes, we have a comparative analysis of our products, especially when it comes to the um, usual questions, what's the difference between non-inverter units to inverter units and using split type, conventional split type air conditioning units to uh, what we call the VRV or more popularly known as VRF. And also on the other hand, sir, um, sorry, sir, what's the second question? Uh energy ratings of your products sir um, for the energy ratings of our products we have several lineups but these lineups are me i think it can be divided into two one of the lineup is our standard model that um its major role or major purpose is just to co um, supply the cooling requirement of the room 
of the conditioned space with the minimum ER. And the other one is our v, what we call the VRVX model. It is specially, specifically used for buildings aiming for higher ER ratings, for buildings uh, aiming for lead accreditation po. So, yun po yung uh, kumbaga, isang distinction ng e power uh, ng EER ratings ng mga equipment natin. Sir. And I guess for those with Verde, no? Anyway, yes, sir. Uh, how about uh, Sir Eric? For Dyson naman. Reading and comparative analysis. Yeah. For Dyson naman, sorry, we don't have a specific energy rating. But I can say that uh, yung uh, hand dryers namin are ang range niya is 1,000 watts to 1,600 watts yung consumption niya. So factoring that in, uh, eh, ang drying time namin is only 10, 10 seconds to 14 seconds uh, compared to a conventional one with a uh, uh, higher wattage consumption dahil, uh, because they have uh, ano, heating elements. And then they take uh, 30, 40, min uh, 40 seconds more to, to dry hands. So easily uh, using ours versus conventional hand dryers, uh, the energy consumption would be, I would say, six to eight times uh, less. Great. So that is faster drying time and lesser consumption of energy. Power. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also from Mr. Rafael Dulagan for Price Waterhouse mm -hmm. Coopers, how can we assess the tool and can we integrate it with any 3D? modeling software uh, okay. thank you ah, okay mr gopal yeah yeah thank you for that question so uh, you know it has capabilities of uh, integrating uh, models from bim uh, that is in case there is a revit model if there is a sketchup model uh, you know it can be straight away plugged in and it can be integrated uh, into our solution i hope that answers the question just to add to uh, what gopal said uh, yes. so this this tool is 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 a kind of a service offering from our side so we are not giving this tool to our clients <clears throat> what we are doing is that when when any of client engages pwc to assess uh, their properties uh, maybe uh, we, we integrate all these things and then maybe we can present these analysis to clients or maybe developers or whosoever it is so that they can take a decision. So it's, it's a kind of a service offering. So we are not selling this tool. It is a service offering where maybe once uh, uh, any, any developer engages PwC, we can work with them to maybe do analysis or maybe provide solutions. Thank you, Mr. G. All right, for uh, first Balfour, yeah, Sir, Sir Ron. So others would see certification as add-on cost. You already mentioned that your uh, first Balfour is already walking the talk. So, but but why the need to get certified, pa? Uh, can you share on your experiences also on getting the Berde certification for your headquarters? Thank you, um, Esther, no, for the question. But for us in First Balfour, it's about um, continuous learning, um, continuous improvement, and if you need to make big decisions, no, such as um, in 2016, we stayed out of coal, no, uh, which is one of our um, core uh, businesses. So it's really about not about um, um, the financial implications, no. At that time, uh, we're enormous, but I think to answer the question, no, putting people, us, no, and the planet. Uh, before profit um, has made us well first ball for different so today uh, we take the lead in um, construction renewable energy facilities um, building um, um, geothermal plants and wind and solar farm yeah, so I, I i guess uh also a uh, question would be on what value did uh, the certification provided for uh, first Balfour. Mm -hmm. So on that, um, Chester, no. Well, some of our clients um, asked, no, if you have those certificates, no, such as um, Verde. Uh, so we 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 uh, were certified, Chester, no, way back. Well, that was ten years ago, no. 
uh, we, we just shared to our social media pages and uh, we collaborate no, with this um, Verde on this initiative. Um, the latest, um, I think we also have collaboration with um, Drink um, Sustainability Communications with um, one of the alliance no, with Net Zero Carbon Alliance. So yeah, there, um, Chester. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll ask also for Wall Vision Corporation, Sir Aldris, um, yeah, what was your experience working with uh, Bear the Certified Project, sir? Hi, uh, Chester. Good morning. Yeah, to all our fellow speakers and audience. So, uh, let's just give a concrete example uh, I actually went to the CNA uh, two months ago. This is in Cebu. So, the way that comes to uh, where the certified project, uh, the difference is immediately felt when you go into the construction site. You will see a, there's actually a division um, when it comes to the waste. There's more waste management, like there's a staff to recycle and the paper. And this is very, uh, because as we can see in a construction site, there are a lot of workers there. So uh, the discipline uh, imposed uh, by management uh, really helps because uh, you, the cleanliness is definitely felt once you go there in the organization of waste. And there are a lot of signs there that said, uh, like, you have to we have to uh, segregate our waste. And there are also plants planted in the construction site. And that's a big difference between uh, a very good certified project and uh, So in terms of working with the, the project teams on uh, doing the documentations for um, the requirements and the credits, how will how is our uh, world vision able to assist in that, sir? When it comes to uh, assessment, um, I can say it all comes in the bidding portion of the project because we are being required with certain documents. To, to, we are being required certain documents to comply with, with the various certification of the specific projects. So uh, our main uh, contribution, per se, is the thermal analysis that our class has. So as mentioned earlier in, uh, in my report, uh, it's it's more of the thermal analysis and the class certification that contributes to us complying with the necessary for the certification a project is fine. Uh, thank you, Sir Aldris. Uh, there's another question here also for you, uh, Wall Vision. You mentioned uh, the design of the facade is included in your services. What are primary considerations you think clients should be aware should be aware of to ensure the efficiency of the building facade? Okay. So for facade efficiency is um, there are certain types of glass that we, we can use. So um, for more efficient and sustainable buildings, uh, we would recommend an insulated glass unit, which is an IGU, uh, to visualize further for our audience. It's, it's, it's like a glass with, it's like two glasses, you can see in my webcam, and there's an air space between. So, the air space in between helps it helps the helps the heat reduction more coming from the outside going in. So uh, with, when it comes to glass specification, we would definitely recommend insulated glass unit to be used uh, for the building. All right, thank you. Uh, for drink. Uh, okay. So have you done a study on the impact of sustainability reporting or com or communications to the target audience or the general public? If yes, 
what insight did you get from their feedback? Oh, excuse me. Uh, to clarify, oh, hopefully I can be heard. Yes, yes, okay. yes we hear you. Thanks so much, Sir Chester, and, and, and the rest of the panel here. And thank you for this question. Um, I'm picking up that we'd like to uh, we'd like to find out more of the, the actual effectiveness, the effectivity of communicating sustainability. Uh, to clarify, we uh, don't have any studies because we don't need to, because we uh, uh, directly hear from our clients who are the ones who are reporting on their sustainability, on the benefits of engaging the employees, of uh, creating that foundational understanding and getting on the same page of why are we closing our lights and our air conditioning units at this time in order to save en energy. What does that mean? Um, not just in terms of saving money, but also uh, benefiting the host communities wherein the plant or the facilities are in. Uh, these very practical and tangible effects, uh, uh, I'd be able to share directly on particular clients, but in terms of a study, uh, we don't have that kind of information. I'd be more than happy to be able to consult freely with whoever had asked this question of exactly what are the benefits that we have heard from clients of your similar industry um, or similar operations so that we'd be able to uh, connect you with the solutions of communicating, engaging with the employees, with the different host communities, with the customers on uh, why uh, the business is becoming more and more sustainable and how it benefits those particular stakeholders directly. I'd be happy to be able to answer those questions directly as well. Thanks for the question. Thank you. Noted yeah. on that. Gabe. Gabe, is it okay if you share your contact to them, your email contact? Yes, very happy to do so. And if I'm not sure if it's possible for us to add it here in the chat, um, I'm seeing. Um, but yes, we'd be able to share. Please feel free to reach out to bizdev at drinkph.com. That's b u s d e v at drinkph.com, and it's the same email address also on our website, drinkph.com, where you'll be able to also appreciate um, uh, a bit more in detail the kinds of ways that we're able to contribute uh, our effective sustainable communications solutions to our clients and how they are benefiting from those. Thanks so much. Yeah, um, excuse me, Chester, if I may yes, add please. to the conversation, if you don't mind. Sure. To the, yeah, um, yeah uh, we've, we've also haven't conducted any study, but maybe just to share the experience of our clients now in terms of their of articulating their sustainability strategy as we also help them navigate you know, into this. You know. um, now, more and more in the public you now is very interested in knowing the companies, ESG performance, particularly the investors and the lenders, because this helps them in their decision whether or not, for example, to invest in a particular company, put in additional funds, and even for bankers, you know, they, they want to make sure that a company is more than ESG compliant, is performing well in these aspects. Hence, they use make use of those sustainability reports no, as a, a first view of how the company performs in terms of sustainability. The ESG rating companies are also using the sustainability report in assessing the performance and the risks, the ESG risks um, that the company has. No, um, uh, in terms of the environment, social, and governance. No? For employees, we, we conducted the uh, head study and we found that um, sustainable companies that attract no, um, talent. No? Hence, no, being able to articulate how you are performing, how well you are performing in terms of ESG uh, will allow you to attract um, more competent uh, talent and also our customers as well. Thank you, Kate from Price Waterhouse Coopers. Um, next, uh, I have a question for Daikin, uh, yeah, uh, Engineer Geom. Um, you, in your presentation about uh, designing where you introduce 
uh, fresh air into the, the space. You mentioned about a streamer technology. So how does this work and how different or how similar is this from uh, the technologies providing for negative ions or plasma technology and uh, purifiers? Yes, sir. Actually, yes. sir, uh, the streamer technology, uh, once again, uh, before anything else, thank you for that question, sir. And actually, sir, the streamer technology is the same patented technology uh, by Daikin that is present in our air purifier. And right now, we have uh, our new models in which the streamer technology is already incorporated in split type air conditioning units for FCUs or fan coil units for wall mounted and a ceiling cassette. So streamer technology is the technology uh, incorporated in this equipment in which um, the bacteria are decomposed. Uh, there is a filter um, in the units, which is a, a electrostatic HEPA filter in which these bacteria are filtered out in that um, are trapped actually are trapped in that filter and once these viruses are trapped in that filter most of the time uh, we replace these filters because it is already clogged because of the bacteria that were trapped right but with the use of streamer technology there's an electrostatic um, force that circulates in the system in which this uh, this prevents from the clogging po of the filters in that case, our filters are not needed to be replaced regularly. Answer. Thank you. Um, Siguro also as a clarification to that. So for example, if I have an existing unit, uh, do I need to change the entire thing to have that uh, streamer technology or can an existing unit be retrofitted to include your streamer technology? Yes, sir. For our, um, the streamer technology is incorporated with the equipment itself. So if we have existing units, we needed to replace the whole unit in order to incorporate the streamer technology, sir. Thank but you. For the, yes, sir. Um, but that's for our split type units. In addition to that, uh, as I've showed earlier, we have streamer duct chamber. Streamer duct chamber is an accessory installed to the existing ducting po. So if there's a building already designed and it is an existing building and you want to incorporate purification in the system po, if there's an existing ducting, we can uh, install the streamer duct chamber. So it's an accessory, sir. Great. Thank you for that information. I have another question for First Balfour, Sir Ron. Um, are your sustainability targets and protocols applied to all your projects and clients, uh, construction processes and procurement processes? Thanks for the question, Chester. Yes, um, since four years ago, um, we have implemented it from our head office down to our um, projects. And at the same time, we've started um, four years ago as well to measure our carbon emissions. This year, we are implementing um, our own um, um, sustainability uh, targets, um, which we call as our baseline data. And moving forward, no, starting 2023, we'll use that baseline data to, to guide us no, and eventually track to track, monitor our um, carbon emissions and targets. Thank you. Uh, for thank you. drink. Th thank you, Sir Ron. For drink, um, I guess this is driven by the SEC sustainability reporting requirement that is uh, now being asked of companies. So, how long would uh, a typical engagement prior to report release? Uh, how 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 long is a typical engagement prior to report release? And then also about. Uh, cost of sustainability reporting siguro can you if you can provide a uh, a figure an estimate on a basic reporting and uh, if it's the whole package yes certainly uh, uh, cutting right to the chase there in terms of uh, what is the investment certainly uh, because um, we all know and understand that non-financial uh, 
performance comes with some financial investment in the beginning, and we need to ensure that it's all well worth it. I'd leave the details over to my colleagues in the sustainability department. Um, but from the biz dev side, from the as a, as the business development head of Drink, um, of course, I would like to say that we will hope to engage with any interested reporting partners, particularly those who are publicly listed because of uh, SEC deadlines uh, uh, around April 15, right, for Sec 17A, uh, including the annex uh, for the sustainability reporting uh, uh, template that SEC requires of publicly listed companies. Uh, that and that is uh, the deadline there is usually April 15 of the following year uh, that we have to start as soon as possible for. So please do email me. Um, we are providing a early bird discount for our services. That's as, that's exact uh, that's uh, a, more of an incentive for us to start as early as possible that to really uh, communicate uh, that it's uh, very important to start around September or October, we're going to provide an early bird discount that says a uh, very su substantial 10% off of the services and the full services, uh, depending on where the client is on their sustainability journey. Also depends on the size of the corporation. If it's a large conglomerate, of course, uh, it will take a lot more uh, time and resources for us to collect all of that data, uh, to analyze and assess, to do the quantitative and qualitative analysis, to be able to uh, do uh, consult you on interviews and for your actual storytelling, because of course it's not just about reporting the disclosures or the data, but to humanize that data, to make it accessible and engaging and impactful uh, to those stakeholders, to uh, the investors, the employees, of course, and the customers. Um, it will take a lot of time. It, will it takes a, a, around at minimum six months. Uh, we would love to be able to have more time with you to really get to know you, to really tell your story better. So that does take time. And in terms of cost, um, I'm afraid I won't be able to give a kind of ballpark figure because of course we have so many participants here on a very successful event. I think over a hundred uh, participants here. So it would be unfair to all of us if we give a little ballpark failure. So I do encourage everyone to uh, drop us in, uh, to contact us over email. Um, but I will say that as a, a, an advocate of sustainable development in the Philippines, that we provide a special discount as well for small to medium enterprises such as ourselves, because we certainly want to um, uh, mobilize uh, the enterprises who make up if I'm not mistaken, from the latest data from the SEC, 90% of privately owned businesses are SMEs. So if you are an SME like us, I'd very much encourage you to uh, please contact us to be able to see how we can uh, provide our solutions at a reasonable cost to where you are in your journey so that we can reach the heights and the impact uh, that our fellows in the larger enterprises do have. And uh, certainly, I'm um, also enjoining everyone to join the Net Zero Carbon Alliance either way, uh, because that's how we are able to partner at no cost, uh, just uh, but in terms of connecting with each other on how we can partner up uh, you with uh, suppliers uh, and product providers uh, from our members. Um, of course, other uh, other services such as our one of our founding members as well, uh, First Balfour and everyone else here in the panel as well to please uh, incur uh, please do connect with us on the Net Zero Carbon Alliance to, so that we'd be able to make all of our ser services more accessible to as many of our uh, fellows here in the panel and the participants as much as possible. Please do, looking forward to your email. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. So for our last question, we have a question from Rich Gamba. This is for all the speakers. So we are promoting circularity and transforming the whole supply chain. So how are you greening your own company supply chain? Let's start with uh, Daikin. Yes, sir. Um, actually, sir, here in Daikin, we are greening our company, firstly, by uh, really um, investing in the research facilities. For we know that there's a continuous improvement in our equipment. Uh, and recently, sir, um, there's this, uh, we are currently using the R30 to refrigerant, 
four hour split type air conditioning units, which are especially used for residential application. Uh, this refrigerant has a zero ozone layer depletion potential and a very low global warming impact compared to R22 and R410A. And I'm sure that Daikin will not stop innovating because uh, we are really um, focused not just in providing the perf or providing the best quality air that we could attain, but also equipment that are very sustainable for, for the next generations to come. Thank you. Um, but do you have a, a like, say, a policy or on on uh, on greening or um, circularity for from for your supply chain? Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, actually, sir, for us, most uh, regularly we are having this meeting in order for us to forecast our um expected projects for us not to be able to um accumulate so much stocks in our um, storage area sir in that case our products are always uh, new and not stored on a very long time before the delivery date sir all right thank, thank you for first balfour same question how are you greening your own company supply chain sir sir ron um, yes sir so aside from having our sustainable statement um, our sustainability brand, which is we build uh, for good. Uh, one example we can share is our um, equipment rental division, um, T1 Rentals. So we invested in um, greener um, equipment through the acquisition of, uh, they, they call it Euro 5 trucks, um, exceeding the local emission standards of Euro 4. Uh, they are 22% uh, less um, carbon emission. Um, aside from that, we also have or we purchase our own um, equipment simulators. So with this uh, simulator, no, the use of an actual heavy equipment um, in the conduct of training is no longer um, required. So thereby reducing fuel cost and uh, um, avoiding the truck or equipment's um, wear and tear. Thank you, Sir Ron. Uh, Sir Aldris, same question. How are you greening your own company supply chain? So, yes, uh, first I'd like to start uh, to mention our efforts for a year to our fabrication plants. Currently, we have what we have um, two in Cebu and one in Dakao. So, we follow a strict um, protocol when it comes to waste management and proper disposal as we and mod model to uh, our project site since we are very there's a there's a what do you call this there's a segregation that's happening in terms of who disposing our waste because when when we fabricate our glass and aluminum uh, there's a lot of uh, wastage and a lot of um what do you call this? Uh, waste stage, yeah. And we're dealing with a lot of workers here, so uh, proper discipline and confidence. And aside from this, uh, when it comes to our class, uh, there is we make sure that there is a there is a free and bold consumer uh, recycle content when making the glass. So we make a point that our suppliers uh, follow this and make sure that good to know sir same question uh sir uh eric would you like to share about your company's uh greening initiatives for your supply chain uh there's no audio sir Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Uh, Dyson na lang as a manufacturer, uh, they measure the environment impact of uh, their operation and products. They set targets for improvement and monitor progress against uh, targets in areas including uh, limited uh, energy use, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, water consumption, and waste. And then as far as uh, 
the products itself uh, they focus on design design uh, the packaging and then the behaviors using a mechanic based uh, approach uh, to reduce uh, adverse environmental impacts in production use and uh, end of life thank you thank you for sharing that sir um a lot for uh price waterhouse coopers same question how are you greening your own company supply chain yeah thank you for that question chester um we are a service company so our impact to the environment now is not that much nevertheless we do our share uh, many years ago we've established this um policy you know, in the company that is not to use plastic cups you now whether in um you know, company gatherings or welcoming our clients. You now we either provide um, gel glasses or bring our own tumblers. We also reduce the use of our paper because that's the the, the main thing now that that we use now in in our um, in our operations. Um, each lines of service had that uh, campaign, and you know, making the use of technology. We try to digitalize our operations and processes, our review process as well. Um, during the pandemic, we also engaged our employees to be more environmental friendly by having, uh, for example, uh, what we call the Green Challenge, where in the challenge, no, employees to engage in sustainable practices and to share those practices and we gave them point systems and awarded uh, those who uh, garnered the highest points. No? Um, as a firm, we are also committed to net zero by 2030. And we've started you know, um, measuring our GHG emissions. You know, as a matter of fact, you know, there was a huge reduction of our GHG emissions, but also mainly driven by the pandemic we're in. We had to, you know, work uh, from home. Actually, right now we're still working from home. Uh, we've reduced our, um, yeah, uh, energy consumption piece in the office and 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 uh, and other um, energy consumption. Um, activities now because we, we think that we can operate uh, remotely uh you making use of um the technology you know, in, in servicing our clients it's, it's really interesting how a lot of companies are starting to go in towards this direction um promoting sustainability through engagements with uh their employees uh and other initiatives uh let's go for with our last uh company drink same question how are you greening your own company supply chain yes uh, we have a very short answer for drink because we are a very small company and similarly to pricewaterhousecoopers of course a service uh, business so mm -hmm. whereas uh, uh, perhaps uh, some of our a lot of our participants here are looking at 2030 on make on on going uh, maybe 50 percent digital we can say a drink we're 80 to 90 percent digital already um, working from anywhere, such as myself right now in the United Kingdom. And uh, what uh, I hope to emphasize with uh, my colleagues, KitKat, Katrina, and Ram, who I'd love to be able to uh, uh, tune into uh, a bit after what I'm going to say up, up top, is perhaps the other services that we provide to our clients so that they can green their value chain, because that's not really something for us as a company that we focus on. We focus um, on how uh, we connect uh, our different partners together. And from the reporting standards, uh, from the financial institutions uh, who we have projects with all over the world, as well as, of course, the conglomerates who hope to get that green financing, uh, as well as uh, and other companies, non-government organizations, and uh, Nonprofits such as uh, particularly the Forest Foundation Philippines, who has been our longtime partner. Of course, uh, FPH Energy Group, one of our longtime partners as well, in order to make to give you connections on how to uh, uh, get uh, green energy uh, from the largest geothermal uh, operation of the world, right? Uh, and uh, others uh, in the FPH Group, uh, such as First Balfour, always shouting out to. Uh, our fellow founding partner of the Net Zero Carbon Alliance, and always uh, plugging our, the Net Zero Carbon Alliance, as well as listing yourselves, please, with the Phil GBC. Uh, what we learned up top, of course, making those connections um, with each other, such that uh, we are all sharing as well 
uh, the accountability and the benefits of uh, pursuing sustainable development uh, for our country is how we uh, make our value chain more green because we have very little else in the value chain. Um, and I'd love to turn over to uh, our colleague, my colleagues, KitKat and Ram on the other services that we can provide that might, uh, will probably be more relevant and to the uh, attendees here who are asking this question. Uh, so KitKat, please take it away. And thanks so much, everyone. Yes, thank you, Gabe. Um, apologies, everyone. My camera is off right now because my Wi-Fi is unstable. Um, yeah, just to add to Gabe, I guess internally at Drink, what I want to highlight is employee engagement as well, although it does not directly, you know, impact the environment. I think that's very important in starting any green initiative, any initiative that can contribute to um, uh, in addressing societal issues, environmental issues, because it's really important for the company, any company to align its values with the individual values of the employees as well, so that you can engage them and that you can empower them to also work towards um, a common goal. Um, as for our clients, um, we are a small service provider and although our main service is to um, produce sustainability reporting, we encourage our clients um, post reporting to, um, to, to continue their, their journey in sustain, sustainability by um, creating, for example, a sustainability framework having clear focus areas pillars on what um which areas you can uh, create the greatest impact on creating a roadmap setting targets um, reviewing your material topics and also um regularly conducting stakeholder engagement and all of these factors are you know really important in order to you know continue to move forward to go past that compliance stage in your sustainability journey to um hopefully uh, for to also help our clients become leaders in their industry. No. So yes, that's all I have to add. And I think um, apologies, Gabe. I think Ram is having really unstable Wi-Fi right oh, now, no. so she's unable okay. to add to that. But yeah, a lot of it was covered naman by Gabe. And thank you very much for that question. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you very much. So thank you to all our speakers. Um, to all the participants, thank you also for participating in the discussions. If you have further questions for our speakers, please contact the field GVC National Secretariat. Send in your questions via email to bg2022 at fieldgvc.org and we'd be happy to connect you to our speakers after the event. Thank you once again to all our speakers from Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines, First Balfour, Wall Vision Corporation, uh, Dyson. Uh, Dyson and uh, Coban Cat uh, Hardware, uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers, and Drink Sustainability Communications. So thank you. Yeah, you may now you, turn off your you. video. So thank you to our participants for joining us for episode six, the Green Building Marketplace. Tomorrow at 9 a.m., Episode 7, The Health and Well-Being for Buildings, will feature an overview of the Phil GVC Health and Well-Being for Buildings, version 1.0.0. Neo Property Management and Phil Invest Alabang will share their experience and insight on how they incorporated health and well-being as a priority in the planning and implementation of their building projects. Presentations on health and well-being related topics will be featured in this episode. Also, the Department of Energy will also share updates on policies and programs. In the afternoon at 1.30 p.m. tomorrow is Episode 8, The Circularity. Phil GBC will showcase best practices and strategies on resource efficiency and management with particular focus on principles that enable circularity. Presentations are geared towards enabling the building industry stakeholders, that includes the project owners, building professionals, and contractors, to integrate and utilize circularity strategies and practices in building projects. We will also host the first training for version 1.0.0 of the Health and Well-Being for Buildings certification program at Episode 9, The Professionals for the Health and Well-Being. 
the H plus W professionals training course will help increase the capability of professionals and project proponents in implementing health and well-being strategies in buildings. The training will include the background on health and well-being and the well-being, uh, sorry, and the, the certification program version 1.0.0. Individuals who complete the two-day training and pass the qualifying exams will be recognized as accredited health and well-being for buildings professionals. So please scan the QR codes for each episode to register or contact the PhilGBC National Secretary to, through BG2022 at philgbc.org for more information. To officially close this episode, we have Ms. Rowena Ramos, Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees of the Philippine Green Building Council and Principal of Ecotech Conica, Inc. Ms. Rowena Ramos. Thank you very much, Chester. And it's noon time and we would like to thank you all for your active participation for our Episode 6, The Green Building Marketplace as part of the Building Green Conference 2022. Thank you to our speakers and panelists for sharing their time and expertise. From our field GBC membership, we had earlier engineer John Marie de Guzman, consulting sales engineer of Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines, Mr. Ronald Yu, marketing manager of First Balfour Inc., Mr. Aldris Miguel Chin Cuanco, vice president, World Vision Corporation, and Mr. Eric C., product manager of Cobang Kiat Hardware Inc., representing Dyson Electronics private limited Philippine branch. And to our guest speakers, Ms. Catherine Gomez of PricewaterhouseCoopers Philippines, Mr. Rajiv Ralhan and Mr. Gopal Parasu of PwC India, Mr. Harris Guevara, Ms. Ram Nepomuseno, Ms. Katrina Po, and Ms. Gabe Onkiko from Drink Sustainability Communications. We hope this event helped increase your awareness and knowledge on current technologies solutions and sustainability practices available in the market which support the growth of green buildings. We need to empower our decision makers, building professionals, and current users of green building to make sound decisions on the technologies appropriate to their projects. We invite you to be part of the Green Building Procurement Hub or Green Building PH, our online green procurement platform which provides a listing of current product ser services and building spaces with green credentials. You may contact the Green Building PH Secretariat for more information. Thank you to our BG2022 sponsors and your sustained support. Gold Strategic Partner, NEO, Aboitis Infra Capital Economic Estates, City Homes Builders and Development Inc., to our Silver Strategic Partner, Wall Vision Corporation, Daikin Air Conditioning Philippines Inc., First Balfour Inc. And to our Bronze Strategic Partner, Monocrete Construction Philippines Inc., Botanica Nature Residences, Bill Invest City, FPD Asia, AGC Asia Pacific Private Limited, Datum Incorporated. <laughs> We hope to see you in our upcoming episodes, Episode 7, The Health and Well-Being on Wednesday at 9 a.m., Episode 8, The Circularity on Wednesday, 14th of September at 1.30 in the afternoon, and Episode 9, The Professional Health and Well-Being from 15th to 16th of September, 8 to 5 in the, in the afternoon. So we would like also to invite you to visit philgbc.org for more information or contact the philgbc national secretariat at bg2022 at philgbc.org. Once again, thank you to all our participants this morning, episode 6, the Green Building Marketplace. Happy World Green Building Week and good afternoon.